So I want to get a uh, mic song. Uh, this one is a bit shorter. Uh, is it just one mic today? Or uh, yeah, yeah, it's the same one. Yeah, they're coming. Bolt's coming? Excellent. Can we get the team listening? Do you want to have a cameraman? Okay. So I'll show you how to use the camera for this board. It's pretty easy. It's I pretty can, um, I'm familiar with this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In both yeah, sides, I'm getting the mic shot. Bolt is getting, getting a drink of water and then he'll be up. Yeah, I'll grab you one in a second as well. Do I have to eat? Uh, yeah, I'll, be, I'll do this for going. Hey, mind him on here. Alright. Tell him he had a break. Oh. The stairs would have killed you like that killed mine. Jeez. No problem. I'll spend more money today. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long time between drinks and I appreciate your company for the first time since Sunball 2020 where we saw these very two teams here combating off for the last game of 2020. It is a season away and now we have the opportunity to see the defending champions, the Bayside Ravens, defend home turf here on their very own field they now call home here Leo Williams at Karina Lee's Club. Their opponent, the 2020 combatants, who once lorded over this league in a sense trying to find their feet again. How will they go in this test of measure against the defending reigning champions here on home field? I'm Kenny Andres, and I'm ecstatic to have your company again here in season 2021 as we get ready to kick off the title defense of the Bayside Raven. Soon to join me, Adam Bolts of Bolton, once he is done quenching his thirst Mitchell Bessie gets us underway here at Leo Williams Oval and this will be downed and we'll see the Stingrays first with the ball running left to right on your screen dressed in Columbia blue and white helmets and of course the Bayside Ravens wearing their purple on black forgive me if I'm fresh out of breath I've come straight from another call over it when I'm alien had to climb a Staunch set of stairs here to get here as my broadcast partner Adam Bolton readies himself for a wonderful call here in the inaugural game here at the Leo Williams Oval. Oval. Gridiron now comes to Karina. This Bayside team training here for the last season. Didn't get to play any home games here last year, but have been here since season 2020 after leaving Belimba, Cannon Hill, and then the Bayside region before them. I will take this opportunity to welcome in Adam Bolton, welcome to season 2021. Thanks very much, Kenny. Great to be here. And there it is, the first play for these two teams. It's weird to see that number nine back out there, but it is a short gain on the ground for the Stingrays to start their offensive season. A lot of new faces for the Stingrays this year, so it's going to be interesting to see how they hold up, particularly in the first game of the year. Yes, not going to lie. Going to be coming in a little bit undercooked. I'm not going to lie to you, audience, because we were <laughs> unaware of this stream. <laughs> Till about 23 hours ago so don't have the usual 
notebook of notes are usually possessed in these games. Nonetheless, two teams I'm very familiar with. That's 38 in motion. As the Stingrays have it here on second down and nine. Another handoff here as that running back dances behind the line of scrimmage with this vaunted Bayside defense holds him to what looks like a no gain. They're going to have a third and long here, the Gold Coast Stingrays. Adam Bolton, I know I uh, sent you on a, a quick errand to acquire as much Stingrays information as you could over the last morning and a half. What did you come up with? Yeah, very tricky on game day to uh, get a lot of intel as a lot of people don't really want to talk to you, funnily enough. But I'm just uh, fumbling through my phone to get some notes, so just bear with us while we do that. And here on third and long, Kyrie Curry, it looks like, is starting at quarterback as I acquire these names now. He'll look left and be pressured immediately. Scrambles out right, though. He's got chained after him as he floats a pass into the direction of number 11, Matthew Major, that appears. And I thought there might have been flags on the play, but it will be a three and out here for the Gold Coast Stingrays in their first possession of the season. And the Bayside Ravens will start their attacking football in what would have to assume some solid field position. Yeah, actually, uh, funny you mentioned uh, Matt Major. He's actually one of the guys that, uh, from the uh, brief research I could do this morning, that the Stingrays are actually really excited to see what he can do this year. A young player, a young wide receiver, who they have big, big hopes for, can do really good things in open space. So, I will also ask you to be patient with our uh, replays tonight because uh, they've got the guy commentating, doing the replays, and uh, got to wrap his head around doing a couple of jobs at the same time as this punt is narrowly sent away. It's a good one with great purchase by the end of it, but Warwick Bones Russell is on the other end of it, oh, no. and boy, can that man make people miss so well, in fact, he will score the first points for the Bayside Ravens title defense here in 2021 that looked like a 60 yard punt return. Oh wow, Kenny, that is a nightmare for the brand. You don't want to see that sort of uh, that sort of return given up on a, uh, it was a fairly, like it was a close, punt was almost blocked, but got it away. It was a decent punt, just an outstanding run back there by Bones. And uh, don't know how much we will catch on a replay here. I apologize, but we will wait for the extra point to take place. Jeez, what an electrifying start here for the Bayside Ravens by one of their veterans, the man who was kicking the PAT, Warwick Bones Russell. Low snap, but it's handled well by Bessie and kicked. Hold the phone well enough yep. by Warwick <laughs> Russell to make this a 7-0 opening here for the home side. Bones are doing a bit of everything there. A nice little toe poke uh, extra point kick, which I only learnt this week what that was. Yeah. So maybe a dying art in the NCAA and NFL, but it's still alive here in Gridiron, Queensland. And that would be right. Didn't get the back end of that replay. My apologies. I will get better as the game progresses. It is a shame, however, that was a wonderful play. Go ahead, cool. flip that red bar a little further back if you want to take a look at it again. I'm sure it'll be on highlight reels through Gridiron, Queensland social channels throughout the week. Oh, absolutely. Be no better way to start a season, really, is it? Absolutely not. I, you really can on three and out as we have the wonderful Gerard Fitzpatrick operating as our hydration officer here in the booth claiming here he's done more running today than he has ever as a player <laughs> seven nil here following successful punt return touchdown to Warwick Russell as they Mitchell Bessie rookie mistake realizes he's got the ball five yards off the kickoff spot there goes the show no matter how many years you have in the sport and Bessie is north of ten almost you can still make some dumb moves, but this won't be a dumb kick. One would suggest yeah, that is a great it's kick. got some great height and it will land awkwardly in front of the front line, but it's a friendly bounce there for the Stingrays. Returning that, I think, is number nine as I go through this non-numerical order chart. Thank you, Bolts. I've done well there, haven't I? To a uh, player we have not got. Yes, we oh, do. yes, we do. Gab Salvo, Gab who is a former Sunball Junior MVP. I believe he was a split... MVP for the, his last season in Colts, which was a couple of seasons ago now, and then won it individually the year prior. That is a talented young man to welcome back into the Stingrays fold. The Stingrays are very excited about what he brings. They, uh, they like his uh, ball carrier vision, and they love his speed in the uh, open field. So we're looking forward to seeing what he can do as the, as the season goes on. Kari Kari returns at quarterback, three and out their first drive. 
Hoping for a little more production out of this one. Three by one here. Open side field is three receivers as they go to Whoa. the screenplay. Out to the 11 in Matthew Major once again. He gets his second touch of the football uh, this evening. First being handed to him that time on a screen. I think that's important after that first drive is to start getting the ball into your playmaker's hands, finding ways like screens and, and outside runs and stuff like that just to give some guys some room and space, get their confidence up, and then as the game goes on, you can start to un open up the playbook a bit. That they can. Let's see what they've got. Plenty of knowledge here still on the, the Gold Coast Stingrays fold despite a lot of key departures over the last five years. Still one of the leading clubs here in Gridiron, Queensland, and I imagine that will be the case for years to come. Ooh. Capewell's looking fast off the edge. Yeah. It's another gift to Salvo, and he meets, I think that is Jerry Fa'agata, who I thought would be playing a guard. Here he is back at defensive tackle. Check that. That could be one of their other defensive players at 92. I 293 is on this uh, team list. That could be Adonil Thompson. Thompson, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw that, Kenny, but Capewell... Um, Lined up covering over on the slot and actually then stepped down to a stand-up outside backer or, or a split-out end just as the ball was being snapped, which gave the uh, tackle something to think about, which then helped Thompson make that play. Vesor Rovens, one of the premier defences over the last three seasons. I was speaking to new head coach Jason Leon, who's jumped from senior player to head coach, taking over Darius Holiday Miller, who was supposed to be moving to the women's head coaching role, unfortunately for the Bayside Ravens and for the women's football community statewide here in Greater Queensland. That league, uh, that, that division, I should say, has been put on hold for a season. But he did mention that they needed to challenge a lot of returning players here. They've chosen to try and mix up this defense much from seasons ago. Here we go again. Second and short. A nice throw to the outside from Kari Kari. We'll see a completion made there to their far wide receiver. That might be the four in... Noah Hull, another Colt move into seniors. He's working on Ravens' debutante there, Popel, who is making his debut for the Ravens. I believe he might have some time uh, in the North Queensland competition. So, speaking of Jason Leon, the head coach slash starting nose tackle has come to the sideline for a breather as the Stingrays earn their first first down of the game. No disrespect to Jason Leone, he might be one of the smallest uh, one-tech tackles we've seen in the competition for a while. It was a little weird running NT next to his name. <laughs> and that is Salvo in the backfield again. It's great to see so many of these former dominant Colt juniors running here at seniors. And oh. Kari, Kari, oh, oh wow, he hung jump. that ball up nicely there to make something out of nothing. It will be a loss on the play. But, uh, yeah, actually, in hard respect, he probably hopes that receiver just drops that ball. True. <laughs> hey, but you'd like to see that, though. I mean, again, it's another catch for Major. Helps him get the hands on the ball, get some, get in the field. Now, obviously, that's on the sideline. But, hey, it helps build that confidence of these young players. And it's something that the Stingrays, from the info, have been able to find out in the last couple of days is they're really excited about, uh, as Kenny's indicated, there's a lot of young guys on this team um, with so many departing senior players. A lot of young guys have come up from the junior ranks who now are, are playing seniors and are, have been able to, to retain them um, so they're excited to see what they can bring to the game now and also building for the future second and what looks like 13 here in the first quarter salvo is getting busy Whoa. here in the first find some space to the outside and get some past the original line of scrimmage that's a solid run by the young man it'll set him up for a somewhat manageable third down here albeit it'll still be third and long so again we get a little bit of taste of that breakaway speed there granted it was many Going a little bit east-west there, which we don't necessarily want from a running back, but we saw some of that uh, breakaway speed there, which we can't wait to see as the game goes on. And uh, Adam Bolton, we're getting the third core man of our call team here, I'm sure. Was that Holly would be Hollywood Row? Is, of course, Coach <laughs> Hollywood Row. Reminding us of Noah Hull, who was playing here at Whiteout, was a 2019 Outback Tryouts camp player there for the junior Australian team that unfortunately got held back by uh, COVID. And there will be a false start, and that will be the first penalty of today's game. That's Matthew Major, and remind me, I'm going to have to get you to repeat yourself here, Adam Bolton. Former player or brand new fresh rookie? Yeah, good question. I believe he's come... Oh, have to check on this. I think he came from Sydney. Oh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> We've learned that it's actually got some family members up here in the group there, so I'd like <laughs> to think... <laughs> He's probably been around for a while there. My so, yeah, so I think you, so. Matt. So, that's not who I was thinking of. He's from Sydney. <laughs> Hasn't played before. There we go. I'll only have good things to say. Well, he'll be working against Popel. Here we are calling 
First down here for the Stingrays, looking left, Ooh. Kare Kare. There was a battle for the ball. It is caught, but it is out of bounds. The recipient of the football making his second catch. There was Noah Hull, but he couldn't stay in bounds. That was a very awkward play. Will ultimately end in an incomplete pass. And it looks like there's a big change there. That is, in fact, fourth down. I'm really excited to see what this uh, Ravens defense brings this year. Obviously, there's a lot of a lot of experience there. Um, and I, you spoke about before, Kenny, about that. They've changed things up a little bit. And the two edge right guys they've got in Thompson and Catwell, they are scary hard to, to game plan against. So I think they're going to be major, major problems for the whole competition this year. So I'm excited to see what they do tonight. This team has got, and it's been very common ground as we look at this fourth down punt and I'll save my thoughts post punt because last time we saw one of these Ooh. it led to a big Ooh. raven touchdown this one well i guess in despite that first punt looking a lot better that one ended up with a better net result <laughs> it'll be fantastic field position for birdtown at the cost of a what looked like to be an eight yard punt yeah as a f semi former special teams coach i use that term very loosely tommy um from the stingrays formerly stingrays will be sitting there shaking his head at that uh yeah that's whew. That's rough. I suppose it's better than six points. <laughs> Indeed it is. But to repeat my, uh, to echo my thoughts, it's, it's common ground to see even the best teams come back with close to 50% fresh rookie players or perhaps Colts moving up. This Bayside Ravens team is easily, by my calculations, north of 60% returning players, all except for one starter, uh, a returning player from season 2020, as that is a good stop in the backfield for the 13. And uh, bear with me. As we look for a number 13 on our Stingrays team yeah, sheet. Yeah, he's not on it. Well, he makes a stop <laughs> on the 10. Uh, there we go. Who I think is... Oh, it's Jamal's in a party. Oh, how could I forget Jamal? Well, I think he's changed long. numbers this year. So, he's no, I think he's actually always been 13. Which oh, there you go. Adds to the embarrassment. Apologies, Jamal. Yeah. He's working against sorry. Warwick Russell now. Sorry, Jamal. You know I don't coach defense. <laughs> Second down, nine yards ahead of them. Darius Holiday Miller oh, wow. for the first time Whoa. in 2021. And here he goes Whoa. down the left sideline of Leo Williams Oval <laughs> and carries his Ravens into red zone territory. Great burst there by Darius Holiday Miller. Doesn't need a lot of room to make you pay. And in that case, a beautiful hole on the left-hand side. And I've once again missed the replay. Apologies. Darius Holiday Miller. I'm sure you'll find it with me to forgive me, with it in you to forgive me. Once again, thank you all for joining us here again in 2021. As we look at the field, the camera's back on the action now, and that is Stegman throwing to Braden Quinn, the tight end, who I think has got in for the Ravens' second touchdown. That he has the young tight end entrenched in the starting position now, catching Jared Stegman's first touchdown pass of 2021. Caught it short on the yeah. out route there and took it forward out of Bolton. Great, great ball. Great catch there on the sideline. Managed to turn upfield, take on the defender and get in for a good touchdown. That's what you want to see from a good tight end. Big target like that and able to get yards upfield in a, in a physical situation. Don't adjust your screens. That was correct. I haven't addressed it yet, but that was Jared Stegman wearing number 27 <laughs> today, opposed to his usual 10s or 3s, as this Warwick Russell kick is up. And this Warwick Russell kick is good for a 14-0 first quarter here for the defending champs. I'm glad you mentioned that, Kenny, because I did actually have a look before that play. I was like, oh, it's a Wildcat package wearing 27. No, wait, that is definitely yeah. Jared Stegman. They've unfortunately had a few uh, issues with the delivery, delivery of their 2021 kits there so they've had to try and bring back as many old jerseys as possible to make it all happen so you're seeing a couple of veterans wearing some different numbers jared stegman being one of those and that's because young Lockie amore the new starting wide receiver he can only wear that jersey there it's the only one that fits him and available so he, he can't have two players wearing the same number on the field at the same time so somehow qb1 missed out of the, <laughs> the priority list there and he's wearing the awkward quarterback number of number 27. That's also why Darius Holiday Miller is returning to his former jersey number 24. 14-0. Still quite young in this football game. The Stingrays already playing catch up to what appears to be a pretty dominant Bayside Ravens. 
I think you asked Coach Leon before the game if you take this to start the uh, first game of the season. I think he'd be very happy with how his team's looked so far. Indeed, it has an all. I think Troy Posey would have flirted with the offside call there mm -hmm. very quick. But here comes the Stingrays, and that's Gab Salvo, who is going to be a huge part of how the Stingrays move the football, not offensively, but apparently on special teams too. Be interesting to see what adjustments or changes the Stingrays make to their offense here. I think uh, they showed a little bit on that last drive. Obviously, uh, didn't go the way they'd like, um, but started to move the ball, get the ball in the hands of some of their young players. I think that's going to continue to be the game plan moving forward. And uh, as they grow in confidence, we'll start to see uh, more yards and more points on the board. First down and 10 here once again for the Gold Coast Stingrays. Kari Kari returning with Salvo. Got Major down here to the near side sideline. But he's going to be looking to the left Ooh. once again. Oh. Almost intercepted. Almost coming up with a oh. nice play in the ball. There was someone not listed on our team list yet. But I think logically that could be Jordan Desbro, who was waiting on a number <laughs> as of last night. And I'm willing to back that call. Not that I'm a punting man or anything. <laughs> no, never. Once. Never, been, never been any discussions about point spreads or anything on this game. Not <laughs> second down and 10 Gold Coast Stingrays looking to make it happen showed glimpse of it through their young offensive skill set core so far thought there might have been play action it'll be Salvo sent at, back at that Ravens defense once more he can maybe just about get it back to the line of scrimmage another third and long here for Kari Kari in his receiving call Makes it very difficult, particularly for such a young team. I know we brought that up a number of times already, but when you put yourself into these positions of third and long, it really limits the playbook in terms of what you can do. So, hey, those, the defensive line can pin their ears back and the secondary know, you know, what to give up and what not to give up. It makes it very, very difficult to convert from here. And I tell you what, this Ravens defense is one of those defenses you don't want to be caught in third and long too often with the pass rushes they have. Third and 11 is the assignment. Kari Kari claps his hands and wants to get things moving. As Kari Kari looks to his left, the oh. ball is tipped by rotational linebacker Matt Bailey, who is welcomed back to Birdtown here in 2021 after a season hiatus. And that is another three and out for this Bayside or Ravens defense. Ladies and gentlemen, if I do come through a little distant, I apologize. It is something we'll have to handle moving forward. I have... Uh, We've got a short lead on the microphone here, so to try and balance, look into each corner of the field um, <laughs> and speak clearly into the microphone. Well, let's just say it's a it's a, a very finesseful dance that I'm still <laughs> trying to perfect. But so, it is one that's outstanding to watch. I do appreciate your uh, your patience throughout these uh, growing fans. This stream, wonderfully brought together by these two clubs here, the Bay Sub Ravens and the Gold Coast Stingrays, wasn't supposed to go ahead, but in the last 24 hours, these two clubs have come together to make this happen. Try to scrounge around to make things work here with LSB and probably soon to be LSA, I would have to imagine, and myself and Adam Bolton here. So this punt is a better one. It's going to dribble kindly oh, down wow. to the Ravens 23, but it's Chris Clark on the back end of it. And there's one person oh. more dangerous in the open field than Warwick Russell. It might be Ooh. the Indiana native, Christopher Clark, who'll bring this ball back to the Stingrays 35. And the uh, Ravens will be in plus territory to start their third drive of the game. Sure, let's uh, improvise. Hmm? All right, so it's worked. Ravens here, first and 10. Ex outstanding field position there from Chris Clark. Um, as Kenny alluded to, one of the more explosive players in the competition, I think, uh, in previous uh, feeds. We've talked about how he's very, very hard to game plan against as uh, an offensive coach. Um, and we see there exactly why. Um, we haven't seen much of you on defense yet tonight, and that would probably be an intentional play by the Stingrays there. Shout out to our director, Sam, as this poor play is a free play here for Stegman, who will Ooh. haul it long there, looking for Troy Posey, incomplete. And we've got our second flag of the day. Hold the phone. Don't have the referees mic'd up, so I'll feel free to talk all I want. <laughs> Shout out to our director, Sam, here for LSB, who's just swung this microphone through the window for me to allow to comfortably get off my knees and call this game with a, a smidge more confident uh, maneuverability. So appreciation where uh, appreciation's due. First down here, sorry, 
Possibly a repeat first down following the, of course, the offside offside call against the Gold Coast Stingrays. I think it was pretty much all D-Lyman, I think, on that one. Well, that means you can share the blame. <laughs> first and five ball at the Stingrays, 36. Oh, oh Stegman can't handle the snap, and he will lose some yardage there. This will be a positive here for the Gold Coast Stingrays, who at second and ten might be able to pin their ears back as the down and distance starts to work in favour for them. That's just one of those early season issues. The running back goes one way, quarterback goes the other. They'll both put the finger at each other and uh, they'll, they'll iron that out very quickly. Yeah, what's different to a lot of other sports? You talk about all your versions of rugby's AFL. You often get pre-season games and that sort of stuff to work yourself out. GQ, don't quite do that. Maybe a couple of joint scrimmages if you're lucky. So these first one, two, even up to three games can be very awkward. But I'll tell you what, both these teams not looking too bad as this pass is completed here on the... Near side touchline to Warwick or Russell. I said touchline, I mean sideline. Forgive me a break, I was just calling rugby league. But that is a chain mover here for Birdtown as they get inside the Stingrays at 27. But yes, Adam the, Bolton, what else has your research lead alluded you to here for this uh, matchup this evening? Yeah, the uh, the Gold Coast Stingrays um, are, are very, very, I suppose, I'll use a stockbroking term, very bullish around their uh, defense, uh, defensive line stock this year. A lot of young talent who can do a lot of great things um, and young talent that's being... Quinn in motion. We'll get back to that thought in a second. He moves, moves left to right. Ooh. And that is another gift to Holiday Miller and making the tackle there from behind his... The 90, and not on that team list. I'll check on the other one Lance has supplied me. <laughs> it's always the fun part of the first round of the season is the uh, different jersey changes and various... And on my quick glance, no number 90. No number 90. Young man, <laughs> I apologise, but wonderful play. Second down and a long six, I'll give it. Stegman wants it. Reverse handoff to Holiday Miller, who will try the left-hand sideline. And now, mm. mystery man in number 90 makes another big play in the backfield. A couple of very impressive plays there uh, from him in terms of uh, staying patient, maintaining his gap assignment, and then reacting to what uh, Holiday Miller has done. Um, but yeah, as we are saying, the Stingrays are very, very excited about the uh, D-line talent they've got this year. A lot of young guys, a um, couple of guys who have been looked at for uh, bigger programs. Um, but yeah, based on uh, practice I was at a couple of weeks ago, they did look very, very good. Just took another scan of that team list, both of ours here. Yes, unfortunately, not quite there. If anyone wants to fill us in on that, you are more than welcome to. And it will be very much appreciated here as the Ravens face a third and long, their first of the evening. A pivot here from oh. Stegman, looking, buying time, throwing this ball downfield to Mr. Nobody. And that will be incomplete, and that will be a successful third down conversion defense here for the Gold Coast Stingrays. It'll be interesting to see what the Ravens do here. They do have some competent kickers out here, but even, but uh, especially I should say by GQ standard, this would be a very long field goal. Yeah, it would, I would expect here, particularly with the uh, weapons that the Ravens have on offense, both at receiver, but also, you know, the, the faith that Stegman will have in that offensive line that are very, very experienced. Um, I would expect they would go for it here. And that they will. Feeling confident, this Ravens offense. Holiday Miller joins Jared Stegman. Troy Posey is out far sideline. Inside him, I think, is Lachlan Amore. They will sprint out right, send some receivers deep. Posey is one of them. And he will find young Lachlan Amore for his first catch as a senior Raven here. He will take this down inside the five. That's an impressive play design there. The, uh, the, the, I suppose bootleg or the rollout like that. Um, having obviously Holiday Miller there as the, the lead blocker um, makes it very, very difficult for the defense as well because they've got to roll their coverage over. And a lot of coverages, particularly in this league, aren't really designed for that. So it makes it very, very tricky to, for, particularly in zone, to work out who's dropping down for where. So inside the five now, we've got first and goal, Bayside. Quinn stays in, he, as far as I know, is... One of their two tight ends, as we might see the end of the quarter here, and as both teams look to take a jog, that is the end of the quarter here. First quarter come to a close here in the opening game for both of these two teams on their 2021 Gridiron Queensland campaigns. 
the defending champs, the Bayside Ravens, they have a 14-point lead over the Gold Coast Stingrays, courtesy of an opening touch, return, punt return touchdown to Warwick Russell, and a receiving touchdown by tight end Braden Quinn. And now they are knocking on the door of adding their third touchdown here at the start of the second quarter. Quick thoughts, Adam Bolton. Yeah, it'll probably the first quarter started as we'd expected. Um, Stingrays obviously having a few teething problems here with a lot of young players. Um, and it's on the other side of it, when you look at the Ravens, obviously a very, very experienced squad. Um, you know, coming off last year's, the last two years, Sunball victories. Um, quick mention here as well that the uh, Ravens players are actually the ones who have made it possible today for the for the live stream in terms of and, and this Stingrays as well. Sorry. Just and this Stingrays have yes, they've uh, combined effort here to make tonight's stream happen. Quick. Acknowledgements there to Academy 49, led by Lance Tongikilo there for young development of players in this sport of gridiron, as well as some support here to the man to my right, Bolton Financial Services, and live stream in Brisbane, Paul Mills, tuning in, I believe, from Newcastle, or northern New South Wales at least, and allowing his staff to make this happen on such short notice. And, yeah, I go all right as well. Lachlan Amore emotions from left to right, or perhaps just forgot where he was supposed to line up. First in goal... Holiday Miller might be hungry here for his first touchdown of the 21 season. They'll hand it to him. He'll bounce out to the right-hand side, oh. and he'll be taken down nicely in the backfield. 45 by number. Tristan Bourgeois by name. Another returning player in a couple of years in the senior system now, I believe. Yeah, that's right, and he's grown significantly over those that time as well. Um, understanding the game certainly improved and uh, really is an asset to this defense. So a great stop by him in the backfield, stopping one of the better red zone runners in Gridiron Queensland. Three receivers out here for the Bayside Ravens. Holiday Miller remains in the backfield. Haven't seen anyone else line up a running back yet. Speed option pitch out to Holiday Miller. Some wonderful scrambling run defense here from the Stingrays. Almost called them the Titans. <laughs> Great work there from Columbia Blue. And this will make this an awkward third down situation for the Bayside Ravens. Arcing up here with their backs against the wall are the Gold Coast Stingrays. Yeah, a couple of impressive defensive stands there to try and, uh, you know, hold them out. That coverage in particular there on the speed option, um, you know, that was just great discipline, great coaching in terms of, you know, maintaining your, your gap assignments and, and personnel and made the play. Warwick Russell, keep an eye out for him on the in this slot. I think he's matched up there with Jamal Sinapati. Perhaps no, it's number 33. It'll be a little pitch out to him, a la Patty Mahomes, Tyree Kill, and it'll be the second touchdown of the night for Warwick Russell, this time on a receiving touchdown. Hard to uh, hard to stop that sort of speed in open, in open field, isn't it, Kenny? In uh, it's the old saying that they say, uh, speed kills in this game, and... Uh, Warwick Russell is one of those guys that you, um, you almost have to play Where's Waldo with every play. Indeed it is. Uh, you know, not on the taller side, Warwick Russell. Like very few people I can actually call shorter than myself. But, uh, geez, <laughs> he makes up for it in talent, hard work, and simple heart. He'll also add the extras here as we look to see the score change. Core score currently 20 nil. That one goes wide. No, check that. Oh, it is three for three for Bones on the day. 21 points. The large majority of these points contributed by that man, Warwick Russell. The absolute uh, difference maker and playmaker out there and uh, certainly an integral part of uh, the offense that uh, Stegman and the Ravens have put together. It's interesting to see what adjustments the Stingrays make here, particularly on offense. Um, defense, are, you know, although the scoreboard says otherwise, the defense has looked reasonable and, and shown some uh, shown some flashes and some playmaking out there. Um, it's been the offense that really struggled to keep hold of the ball and keep their defense off the field and, and take up some time and, and starve the Ravens of possession. So I think this possession, the, the Rays will be looking to maintain that ball, um, get a few first downs, put together a bit of a confidence-building drive and, and move on from there. And just a reminder for any women who might be tuning in here, it is unfortunate that our women's league is taking a hiatus for season 2021. But if this sport is something that appeals to you, maybe you've been watching it on uh, our various broadcast channels here. And maybe you've come across this stream on our socials. But if it's something that's appealing to you, give it a crack. 
all teams across Southeast Queensland recruiting for season 2022 as Gab Salvo fields this kick nicely and returns this back to the Stingrays at 25. And the Stingrays will come back out on offense through quarterback John Curry Curry. And just on what you mentioned there, Kenny, about the women's competition, although it uh, is on hiatus for the 2021 season, um, some clubs like the Ravens are actually still got some uh, active players that they're still training with. So they'll definitely encourage people to, to get in touch with their local clubs or come down to the Ravens, start training down here, and then, hey, see the uh, lay of the land next year. Indeed, indeed. It doesn't take much. It was feels like only a couple of seasons ago where Gridiron Queensland was the shining light for women's American football. And, you know, it's a slight dim for now, but I stress the words for now. As for now, Kari Kari throws right to the hands of Major, pops off those phalanges, and we've got second and ten. Don't know about you, Kenny. I always get nervous when you see balls pop up in the air like that. The old tip drill that he uh, used to do on defense. So um, here I thought you'd be excited. As a former offensive lineman, Adam Bolton, I thought you'd be excited. That makes you eligible. It does, yeah, but I'm, man, I can't catch and I can't run, so I don't think we want to see that. <laughs> uh, it's so wonderful. I'm getting some comments coming through. People watching the stream now, once again, can't express how ecstatic I am to have your company once again here on tonight's Gridiron Queensland broadcast. Much in thanks to the players of the Bayside Ravens as well as the Gold Coast Stinger as a fumble on the play. It, I thought it might have fallen back into the hands of the ball carrier, but it is Matthew Bailey triumphantly raising that ball above his head. What a return wow. for Matthew Bales Bailey. What a game he is having so far. Definitely a difference maker there in at linebacker. That was a hell of a play. And Bailey, look, I, th I don't think he'd... He would hate me saying this, but you meet the man outside of football, you know, to put it politely, he looks like the type of guy who'd do your taxes, but you strap him up in some pads, put a helmet on him, and he's an absolute animal out there on the field. Yeah, absolutely. He's a very, uh, very quiet, humble, unassuming guy when you meet him face to face and you see him on the field and go, wow, that's a different animal altogether. So another chance for this Ravens offense, who's got two offensive touchdowns under their belt so far. More asked of this Columbia Blue oh. defense. That was awkward by all accounts. I think his penalty might be against the Ravens. Lockyer Moray for now has his second catch. Another one of those outback invitees to the junior outback uh, Australian team. And we will hold the phone here for, by my count, as the third flag this evening. Yeah, I think we've got a... a an encroachment or no sorry an offside penalty here on the race so i suspect they'll probably decline this i think just waiting for the call now and it is in fact offside on the defense bolton was correct so that'll be another three five yards and this might sound like poor timing after a penalty, but for two teams who are playing their first game, look, let's just say I've called a lot of first week one games before. <laughs> I actually think this isn't too bad as far as penalties go. No, I tend to agree, Kenny. I've coached and been on the sideline for plenty too. First and five now here for Bayside. Stegman, quick drop off that pistol, and he will complete to Braden Quinn again. Going back to the play, they scored a touchdown on in the first quarter. This time just picks him up. A handful of yards here, and we'll give him a second and short, I believe. Doesn't move the chains. I am correct. We will have second and less than a yard. I think you make a good point there, Kenny, in terms of, you know, it's, it's week one, first game for both teams. Um, as you already alluded to, a lack of sort of preseason or, or opportunities to have decent hitouts. I think so far the game's been of a, of a decent caliber in terms of discipline and execution. Second and one, 21 nil in favor of Bayside, who are in the Stingrays. Red zone as we speak. Holiday Miller in the backfield again. Hasn't been a whole lot of changes to the starters so far, at least on offense for Bayside. A few mixes and matches for the Gold Coast Stingrays. Underneath oh. is Lachlan Amore again. He'll meet up with, I hope, is Napier still in that 19, and he'll tackle him just short of the goal line. Yeah, Dylan Napier making, well, I wouldn't say like the switch from wide receiver to defensive back. He's been doing a bit of both for the last few years, but he certainly looks very... Every year looks more and more comfortable in that defensive role. That's two now. And Lachlan Amore taking a very important role you've seen in modern offenses, that crossing receiver, mm. that receiver that has the speed to burn across there, but also the awareness to know when to stop in between the zones. Good for three catches so far by my count. First and goal. 
Stegman wants it. Speed option. Holiday Miller looking for TD1 of 2021. And that is and exactly TD. what he gets. Oh, well, he's threatened a few times today. And he's a very, very explosive player out on the edge like that. And I don't think anyone wants to try and take him on one-on-one. -on -one. And guess what, Bolton? Let's take a look at that on replay. Oh, we've got to we've got to tee it up. Oh, we do. Yes, we do. Believe it or not. Much to the chagrin of <laughs> Paul Mills, who's badgering me from home. But <laughs> rightly so. There it is. The first successful replay of 2021. Apologize to all the players who made big plays so far through the first two quarters. I am slowly getting there as the game goes on. That's Warren right. Russell, perfect. Three from three so far. That's all right, Kenny. I saw the uh, both teams will uh, be on their huddle this week and they'll make plenty of highlight films to get around on social media. See, for that's a what look I figure. At. <laughs> but I'm out here for the fans. <laughs> and that is a successful kick, making this a 28-point lead now here through the second quarter for Birdtown, defending home turf for the very first time here at the Karina Lees Club, the field being Leo Williams Oval. So, I have to give credit to the uh, the Ravens committee as well in terms of the work they've done in the off-season and securing this field. It's an outstanding facility. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, Leo Williams Oval, my home junior club is a rugby league in. I always dreamt that one day it would be a little shorter commute coming to the Carina than it would out in the Bayside. <laughs> it's finally here, and it's wonderful to have it close to the inner city. I do hope that the actual Bayside regions of Queensland are back out in the Redlands, find a team once again, because I still stand by the statement there is a huge junior catchment out there. Yep. But for now, a presence right here in the eastern, interior eastern corridor of southeast Queensland is being now called home by the for now named Bayside Ravens. I did, qu <laughs> I did question Jason Leon if that, uh, that name is no longer accurate. As this ball is kicked off once again by Mitchell Bessie, high and returnable. That is Gab Salvo once again, finding Whoa. plenty of space. Look at this young man shot out of a cannon. He will get this back to the Stingrays 39. Maybe a little spark like that is what this offense needs to try and get some points on the board. Uh, absolutely. You have a return like that, gets the offense's tail up. They come out in the field, good field position, bit of confidence. Hey. You know, you can make anything happen from here. So, you know, they've got a fairly experienced offensive line, which is going to help them. Um, and that's going to help also with the young players. I'll start to get confidence running behind that. Bolton, you've got a new job, mate. Do I? At the end of every play, you can hit that R button, okay? After every play? After every significant play. So, viewers at home, watch, watch us make a mess of this. <laughs> we're going to make a team. We're going to team effort to get us through here, just like these two teams have come together to make this stream happen alongside live streaming Brisbane and myself and Adam Bolton. First down and 10 here, John Curry. Curry checks something off. He was going to go back under center now. An adjustment made in the backfield. They will hand this off. Ooh. A dive up the middle to Salvo. Yeah. Shake and bake. Times oh, one, wow. times two, and a bit of power to finish that off. That's not a bad looking sandwich there. And that run will bring this to second and a medium. We'll take a look at this once again. You saw them check off at the line there. And look at that. Look at the teamwork by us, mate. Almost as good as the teamwork <laughs> of that Stingray's offensive line. What can you tell me about the Stingray's offensive line, mate? You can't tell me you don't have a little bit of info on those big hog mollies up front. Yeah, a lot of returning players there. So uh, we've got, um, obviously got uh, Charlie back at number 57 and also Jesse Sharp in number 70 uh, who have been around for a number of years now. Probably five or six years for those part guys. Part of the furniture? Part of the furniture, correct. Second and three. Back in the shotgun goes Kari Kari. Technically, his second year as a starter, and this will be a tackle in the backfield there, a measure of revenge for the Stingrays' defense. They'll have a third and manageable here, though, and an opportunity to keep this drive alive as we take a look at that once more, the swarming defense. And as we talked just then about the uh, experienced side of the offensive line, um, yeah, that wasn't one of their better outings, but I think they'll be the first to admit that, so I'm not speaking out of school here. As we see third wall, and they lost a few yards on that. We've got third and five here. The task set here for this three by one receiver formation. Kari Kari looking right, pre snap, and will launch the throw there post snap, but comes back oh. to the middle. And it's our first defensive, sorry, second defensive turnover. My apologies by Peter Moose Brewer. And we'll see how much of that we got caught. I think we're going to have more of the celebration than the actual touchdown. Oh, look at that. We got there, <laughs> and well, look, is it fair to say his pre-snap read, he wanted to go right, tried to come back yep. to look number two, and before he knew it, the experienced 
linebacker, defensive coordinator and coach for the Bayside Ravens comes picking that pass off. Yeah, he's a very, very experienced player. Um, nothing he hasn't seen before. He was just watching the quarterback's eyes and then dropped in his zone and dropped in front of that. It was a um, fantastic individual play there. So following that turnover, first and 10 here, Bayside. A tough night so far for the lads from Narang. Holiday Miller gets sent into motion and we'll have a deep swing pass asked of him and makes a few defenders miss before diving his way back to the line of scrimmage. Might have got half a yard for his troubles. Something interesting with that one, Kenny, is you'll notice how deep Darius Holiday Miller is when he gets that swing pass. Now, if you can't tell me there's not a halfback pass that's been built into that offense somewhere to be dug out later in the year, I'm not here. A halfback pass off a pass, not a handoff? A Sorry, yeah, absolutely. There it is. It's a backward pass. He's allowed to still throw it forwards. Somebody clip that. I think is that we've got an injury timeout now. And they just realised I'm probably tasked with changing the quarters over on the screen too. That'll be a that'll be <laughs> lesson number two for us. But it is a, an injury timeout now down on the field. I can't quite make out the play behind number five there. Yeah, I five didn't is, see oh, that. Is, is that Scott? Oh, I've got Scott Bryce here. Is it not Scott Bice originally? It's Scott Bice, I believe. But I think it's actually Ryan Newton. Oh, Ryan be down. Newton, the uh, defensive tackle and centre this year. Rest. And centre, he's double dutying. Jesus, a good kid, right? I can't, I don't even call him that anymore. He's definitely a grown up, grown man. <laughs> I think he's twenty four, twenty five now, but I still see him as an eighteen year old. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's an outstanding player on on both sides of the ball. Um, back in the in his junior days and having to go against him at practice some days when he, he trained with the seniors, he was always a handful even back then. Um, when he was playing, the, again, one of the smallest nose tackles that you'd ever see, but he just got so low to the ground, it was just so difficult to block. Small by height, big everywhere else. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, big shout out to uh, everyone tuning into the stream once more. Appreciate the love, and I think I've failed in some of my uh, pre-game research here. We'll come back to that in a second, because right now it is second and down and nine here for Birdtown. Braden Quinn goes in motion out to the left-hand side of the field. Three receivers out there now. Stegman wants the ball now, gets the ball now, throws right into the hands of Sam James. Sammy the Hammy James picks up his first catch of the young season. And uh, speaking about seasoned, it is apparent that apparently... Oh, actually, no. Was someone calling you birthday boy even though your birthday was like a month ago? It was last weekend? No, weekend before. Oh, was it that long ago? I can't yeah. remember. Was it two weeks? We're still dealing two with COVID here. You know, <laughs> months feel like weeks. Weeks feel like days. Remember. Hours feel like weeks. In any case, I thought I, thought I might have failed to not knowing it was your birthday, Bolton. But I know for a fact it was two no, weeks ago. Third down and five. Disregard that, chat. <laughs> another conversion opportunity here for Bayside. And it'll be another speed option. But this time, Stegman Ooh. opts to keep it. For the first time, and I think he'll come up just short here, no matter how tall Stegman is. I think he was stopped there nicely from the Gold Coast defense. We're pretty much in line here. You make your minds up at home. I'm going to call that half a yard, and I think the so officials agree with me. So you'd almost bring out the, um, the measurement there, yeah, wouldn't the you? Measurement. And see if the uh, white card comes into play. Something tells me with a 28-point uh, lead, the Ravens are going to throw caution to the wind here. Might, uh, not, that, not that I'm a betting man, but I am. I would say a hard count might be coming here. Well, yes, I thought it might be going in for a quarterback sneak. Stegman will hand off to his trusty RB, Whoa. who is met nicely by number 90. Once again, his third tackle of DHM this evening. we got to find out who he is because he is balling out here tonight. And that is a turnover, the first of which wow. for the Bayside Ravens. Way to stand up. Gold Coast Stingrays missed the replay on that. Missed we that, apologize. Yep. But, uh... Someone please tell us who number 90 is because he is yeah. making a difference this evening. Absolutely. And you mentioned just before, Kenny, about the, uh, the, the live stream. It wouldn't be a, wouldn't be a, a Ravens game without a shout-out to uh, Elijah Cineparty. All, all the way over, and I think in North Dakota at the moment, watching the game. Yes, new dad over the last couple of years. One of Bayside's favourite sons still watching over his old club and, of course, his brother playing Jamal, playing for the Gold Coast Stingrays. Here it is, first and ten, following a fourth down stop here from the Rays. A pass out to Major and a big tackle there by uh, number 15, Joshua Bose, who's getting some time in the defensive back rotation. 
And again, it's what we talked about before, Kenny, about, you know, how you get the ball back with good field position and, you know, start getting a bit of confidence and energy on that sideline. You know, start making some plays. You know, get their way back into this. Probably clo closing in to the latter minutes of the second quarter. I would have to guess. No official game clock here for us to uh, review. But second down is the call here, and that's about to be a second down and longer for Gold Coast, as I think that was... Oh, boy. Let me get this right. I've got to get me pronunciations ready again for this one. I know yeah, it I is Nat Neal. Test for Gabir. How did it go? That's a good effort. That's, uh, as a coach, that's a, that's a, well, offensive line coach, former offensive line coach. That's an absolute coach killer, that one. <laughs> Nice to have you back, Tess, for Gabir. And a second down and four by my count following that false start. Have Don't they actually, I was about to say, <laughs> have they marked it off? You might have heard a bit of confusion going on in my voice. It was yeah. organic as the officials, who are also one of the parties not benefiting from a preseason or some sort no. of scrimmage to really practice off. They, they're getting a few things together as well. Absolutely. I think that's something we've uh, lost in that is, yeah, these poor guys, it's first, first time as a crew for the year, they're going to have a few communication issues too. Second down here for Gold Coast, a very deep alignment for Gab Salvo. From under the centre, they hand it to him though, and a bit of a counter. Oh, here we and go. And look at him, find some speed down oh. the far hand sideline. We're seeing glimpses of this young man's future in this senior division. Again, that's explosive speed in space that uh, that I was told about this morning in, in terms of what he can do. Um, he's going to be a very exciting player to watch in this league for hopefully a lot of years to come. Very talented uh, running back. I think, if memory serves correct, I think he started in obviously the Gold Coast Colts program or juniors as it's been called before as well. Very healthy numerically and also in talent and an organization. I think it was on the Gold Coast white team, which a lot of people considered the sort of more developmental mm -hmm. side, if I dare say so, before eventually moving to the Gold Coast blue team yeah. soon after that. And it was a very fantastic junior football career for him. He's just another one that I'm going to continue to uh, spruik and be excited for as he's made the jump here to the men's division. As and we're going to see an adjustment of, of the... The down markers. And again, I suppose first first game of the year for the uh, the sideline assistants as well. Uh, chain gang's always going to have chain their gang. struggles. Correct. <laughs> first down and ten. From the uh, Ravens, thirty-seven. Nice snap Ooh. off the back foot, but quickly thrown there by Kari. Kari, he was looking for Major, and on the defence there, I think was Young Perrin. I don't mind that, that if, you know, in field, first down, decent field position. You haven't really taken a shot downfield this year. You need to give the defense something to respect. So I like that. And that ball was there. That was a decent effort. Kari Kari, speaking about junior Stingrays who had wonderful careers, play, represented Queensland, I think, took them to national championship levels and obviously still looking to be part of the, the vaunted Stingrays history. Plenty of titles. The... The Naughties dominated by Columbia Blue. Second down and 10. Ooh. A pitch out to Salvo, but he's met immediately by uh, Chand, I think it is, or Thompson, in fact. And they're trying to strip at that ball. I think that's number 70, Joel Maddock, playing all the way to the end there. But check out how quickly Salvo gets met in the backfield. Yeah, was, look, great awareness there by the defense. Great edge control flow in. I think there was a bit of miscommunication or confusion there on the Stingrays offensive line. It... Yeah, it seems like there was uh, the story of two halves there of uh, what side of the line was doing what. But yeah, look, full credit to the Ravens' uh, defensive edge. And we've seen the first timeout taken here. And this is a timeout called here from the Gold Coast Stingrays on third and long. I want to take this opportunity to take this uh, timeout to talk about, once again, about the women's division. It's a shame, particularly for the Ravens, I'm told, about the, uh, the, you know, the women's division folding for 2021 because they've got a lot of keen players who are ready to go for this season. But what I love, I'm taking a look at here and I'm looking at a lot of the female Ravens sticking around, helping out where they can, whether they're running water, whether I'm sure possibly holding chains. A lot of them doing social media and plenty of them just being an yeah. absolute um, supporting, uh, being a big supporter crew here to the, uh, the Bayside Ravens men's and the youth program, which probably participated earlier in the day. So it's wonderful to know that they, despite their uh, chance to play being taken from them. And they're here still to be a part of 
the Birdtown culture. Yeah, absolutely. It's what builds a great club. And also there's a number of them downstairs here who are taking part or actively being involved with. I think they call it the Purple Party People. The PPP. Which is their uh, sort of sideline supporter group, which they've started this year, which is a great concept. And I think, you know, more clubs need to do similar to get more people along to games and, you know, make it an enjoyable family atmosphere. Timeout still being taken here from the Stingrays. How's our man Sam is fixing stuff that we haven't done? Continue the ongoing gridiron education as Sam here also is covering his first gridiron game. He's learning very quickly. As we have third and long here coming out of the timeout. Gold Coast in a Raven territory. Hoping to close out this half with a score of their own. A throw here from Kari Kari. Is, I think there was a bit of miscommunication on the route read there. Major spinning out to his right. The ball coming to his inside shot. Incomplete on third and long. Bringing up a fourth down here. Shout out to, I've uh, got a couple of viewers down in Tassie as well, mate, watching the game. I heard that you were coming across. Don't blame them on one bit. Nice to have a bit of the Tassie presence joining the analytics oh. of, of the stream broadcast. I know you are tonight, Kenny. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> I missed all of that. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what a, a summer of cricket once taught me, and I'm going to let that go through to the keeper. Give that one to the, the Pat McAfee. How you doing? Keep it moving. As we go fourth down, they're going to keep... Nope, check that. Kari Kari off the field, and this will be the first punt on moving right to left here for the Stingrays. Punt What's is that? up, Ooh. and it is awkwardly fielded. Oh, oh. Oh. I think if that is Ben Stokes. They chose to keep their defense out there, trust the safeties to handle that. I want to double check the punter here for the Stingrays. He's at a Pretty busy night so far. It's James, the experienced James Hobby. And oh. something you want, I wanted to bring up with you there, I want to acknowledge both these centers and long snappers tonight. Everyone's done a wonderful Been job. Very good, yeah. It's first week of the season, and we haven't seen a bobbled snap, and maybe I've put the mocker on this. Haven't seen a bobbled snap. Haven't seen a snap go over the head. Maybe you could say the one that Stegman had trouble fielding, but I, I'm going to put that on Stegman. Just, I'll back up. <laughs> I, I think it's Matthew Ole starting at center for the, the Bayside Ravens. I'll yeah, have his back on this is. particular instance. And speaking of Stegman, here he is. Two touchdowns so far in the half as we see a timeout, the second timeout of the half to the Gold Coast Stingrays. Yeah, so back to the, the centre situation. There's two uh, two very experienced uh, centres we have starting today. So we have Ryan Newton for the uh, Gold Coast Stingrays, who we talked about before, who's primarily a defensive tackle, who has been around for a few years and now come to the, uh, the good side. Um, and then, obviously, Matt Ole is the starting centre for the Ravens, who is a uh, very experienced centre. He's played over in Germany. Uh, also been a starting centre for the Queensland Sun Devils. So, I think, Kenny, when we look at that, that's why we're seeing such a good play from the centres and the long snappers tonight. Isn't it just? And it's one of those situations where you only get two practices a week. Yeah. Um, you know, as uh, for American football, if you're lucky, a third of a visual... Um, a, a, a film review practice, I should say, as I finally find my words. But, um, you know, some things that you probably take advantage of looking from the American system where high school and college football, they have a few more than, you know, a cheeky four hours a week to sort of practice these things. These sort of simple um, skill sets, uh, they don't get quite worked out as much as, um, you know, they, they do to our stateside counterparts. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the, the two position groups, have, I mean, it's hard for any position group, but I think the two in particular that are... The hardest to, to get better at without a lot of reps and a lot of practice is obviously the offensive line, but the uh, defensive secondary as well. Um, without a lot of a lot of reps and a lot of practice, it's very, very difficult to get very good at those positions. So another first down here following that second timeout by the Stingrays. Stegman will Ooh. draw play here to Holiday Miller. Shakes the oh, first tackler. Here he goes with a bit of space down the sideline. And will take this out to the Stingrays at 43. The Ravens are one to move. We are moving closer to the back end of this quarter. Haven't quite hit the two-minute warning yet. Stand by for us before we break for halftime. We're going to have a chat to two of those Ravens female players that we were just discussing there. Rookie uh, Kara as well as uh, Riss Marissa Hayes is going to have a chat to us about the current situation 
regarding a recruitment here for the Ooh. Gridon Queensland female division. This pass is going down to Warwick oh, Rutsaw. How ball. clean of a catch was that? Him and the Ooh. nemesis, Jamal Sinapati, go at it again. Oh. And this is another win to Warwick Russell. Well, we say it again, speed kills, and that was that was an unbelievable ball by Speedman. That was thrown perfectly. It was either caught or it was incomplete. Um, Russell runs onto that beautifully and just foot race to the corner. And as we've talked about, he's such a dangerous weapon. Cannot give him an inch. Let's, oh, I found a cheeky. Oh, hang on. Let's go back and Good take a look at this in slow motion <laughs> as horribly Warwick gives us a bit of time to watch his play once again as he... Lines up for the PAT. And you just see the back end of that catch here, and I'll keep you up to date what's happening live. There we go, he's got the extra point coming here. Just see the hold. Never in doubt. And that's another seven here for the Bayside Ravens. 35 points the lead now here for the defending home champs. As we get closer and closer to halftime. And if you're the sort of person to play fantasy football, um, you'd hope you had Russell on your team and you'd uh, probably pack up and go home if you were <laughs> playing against him. How many times would you have a player that's catching touchdowns, kicking extra points, and also returning punts for touchdowns for you? This would go down pretty high in the Gridiron uh, Queensland Fantasy Football Hall of Fame if it existed. Well, absolutely. <laughs> it's been an incredible game by, by Russell. I mean, those of us who have watched him for years, probably not real surprise, but it's still a treat to watch him play. It is. Obviously, starting from that Sunshine Coast Spartan system, I remember coaching against him um, as a, a younger lad, and it's, uh, it's amazing to see. He probably hasn't grown a whole lot since then, to be honest. Uh, but, geez, small man makes big plays. All right, so lined up for another kickoff here. Let's see what this thing race can do on the return game. And it's Bessie back to kick us off, who is not in the starting lineup tonight. I think preseason attendance has a big factor of that, and finding Whoa. a bit of space there was Major, Maddie Major, who has also been a prevalent player here on the attacking side for the Stingrays. And here that offense comes out again. They need to try and find an answer, Adam Bolton. Yeah, look, they've been given some decent field position. Like, this special teams game has shown some explosiveness and some, some playmaking ability. Um, so now this offense just needs to put together a drive, keep the Ravens' defense on the field for a while, but also give their own defense a chance to rest. Otherwise, this is going to continue to get out of hand. Um, so you'd like to see a decent drive here or some points before halftime to give you something to build from from there. First down and 10. Ball on what looks to be the Stingrays 26. A player in motion is a major. Oh. He'll get a similar sort of play that Russell did, and he'll carry forward for maybe half a yard or two. And we've got a bunch of whistles going at the moment. We, I think that's a timeout. No, just a timeout. Nothing to worry about there. And during this timeout, I'd like to uh, give a shout out to Feast on Fruit and Morningside who provided the platters here for the raffle here at Karina Leagues Club during this week one uh, Ravens uh, Stingrays matchup. So a big thank you to there, the Feast on Fruit at Morningside. And I emphasize again, we got some chats coming to us as we enter halftime. Riss, veteran, wide receiver, defensive end, linebacker, whatever you want to call her. Marissa Hayes having a chat alongside a Raven rookie, Kara, who is going to talk about why she stuck around despite not having a, a division to play in here in season 2021. Please stand by for that. Plenty of insight to gather. Second down is ahead here for the Gold Coast Stingrays. Good a couple of touchdowns. 35 points if I, as soon as I click this push button, will be the score on the screen. That is the lead for the Bayside Ravens. Who's that going in motion? Great protection by the end of it. Can't complete the pass though. That was headed into the direction of number 86. I believe that's Riku, is, isn't it? Is, is that Riku Hataya still floating about? Yeah, I think he's uh, retired more times than Brett Favre. Every off season, <laughs> retired, I've done my last game. I mean, it's a long serving, serving veteran of the Stingrays and then uh, Pre-season just about sort of wraps up. He gets the itch again and uh, comes back. 
I've used that joke too many times with too many players now, especially well, especially players out of your mob. Like Chris Mooney. <laughs> shout, out. Is, shout out to Mr. Mooney. <laughs> Third down and a long 11 is the exact amount of yardage this Stingray's offense needs. And it'll oh. be a handoff here as they probably look to kill a bit of clock. Oh. Running, toting that ball forward was Adam Hennessy, who uh, met a wall of purple whose name was Joel Maddock on that last run. Having him come back uh, for the, the Ravens is a massive, massive addition to that defensive line. He's an outstanding football player. He's played a fair bit over in Europe. I think he played some uh, Juco by memory. Yes, um, he did. Arizona Western, I believe. Another yes. One of the Ravens who went through that pipeline. And for those who are pretty honest, that OFA with the uh, Juco system in the US, um, yeah, Arizona Western is one of the powerhouses, so it, that's no mean feat to go over there and play for them. That it be. And if you want an insight into the Juco system in American football, go ahead, Netflix. And uh, last chance you, the couple of seasons you can suss out. It does come with a language warning. A lot. Fourth Co down. <laughs> Coach John Brown. Here, and they're going to send out James Hobby to try and punt them out of danger. Almost had one blocked in the first quarter and oh. end up being a return for a touchdown. This got out eventually and will bounce very nicely. And we've got extreme late oh. flags here. And I think this could be on the Ravens' sideline. Or maybe it's on Jack Capewell. They were the players in the vicinity of that flag being thrown. <laughs> Jack certainly does. Uh, he plays to the whistle, so who knows? Maybe he went a little bit over on that one, but um, we'll wait to see what the um, uh, referee comes back to us with here. Uh, again, that block, uh, that block, that punt was almost blocked. That was very, very close. Just checking if we got it. Oh, just missed it, unfortunately. But once again, the special teams unit for the Ravens, they're... Uh, they're getting very close to lunch meat on all of these edge rushes. So was that was that against the Ravens? I hear. Yeah. On the return. I think they called it on number thirty-two, but I think they got the number wrong there. I'm not sure what happened, but well, thirty-two was the call, and I believe that once again is the Raven debutant Popel oh, okay. wearing Liam Reeves' old number. I believe. Well, Intrigued about what number Liam Reeves is wearing. Backup quarterback now for the Bayside Ravens because he used to wear 10. Now you have three players <laughs> who, who formerly wore 10 for the Ravens. Lockie Amore coming up to goods with the week one number 10 jersey. First down and 10. Now here for the Ravens. Back end of the second quarter. A deep pass here from Stegman finding his favorite target tonight. Warwick Bones Russell. It's one of those situations, I mean, you look at Russell, it's like, okay, so what do we do here? Do we roll, do we roll coverage to him? Do we double team? What do we do? But there's so many weapons on this on this Ravens offense. Very, very hard to do that because then you just, all right, you take take him away. Cool, we've got somebody else. Just to confirm that, uh, Coach Hollywood Rowe, Arizona Western. Yes, of course. The same uh, Juco as former Raven, Jesse Williams. Oh. Troy Posey's gotten oh. deep, but that ball got a little deeper and that'll be incomplete. Fingertip away oh. from being a big play for Troy Posey. And as we talk about that uh, big play potential of that offense, there's another example. Like, ball just slightly overcooked again. That early season, just lack of, of timing. But he had a good couple of steps on the coverage there. He was, he was gone. Troy Posey, who came over from the States, found the Ravens initially before ended up deciding to do his first season with the Logan City Bears came back a year later to join the Bayside Ravens and I believe was part of their championship year championship team last year. First down and second down and 10. Warwick Russell, the danger man, now inside the slot of this three wide receiver set on the right sideline, but it'll be a draw play to Holiday Miller who will be hit at the line by this time number 80. And a flag is down on the play on this second down run. Not sure what we had there. Usually that sort of flag would indicate a defensive offside, but I'm not sure that that was the case here. Maybe offensive holding? Seeing if that was 80 or a oh man 90 again. Okay, no, it was offside. There you go. It's right in front of us here, so we think we'd have a good look at that. There's a lot of things you'd think I'd be uh, <laughs> having a good look at, mate, but here we are, second and 10. Second and five. Probably should take a good look at that down in distance. Second and five here. Stegman wants to go deep. Ooh. Pulls it back a time or two and goes oh. over the middle and finds Lachlan Amore. 
And Amore's having an outstanding start to the season. This game, is that his probably fifth fifth catch today? Yeah, he's been getting busy here in his senior debut. Late flags thrown on the altercation that happened on the back end of that play here. So we'll see how far these sticks get moved. So yep. It will be first down. I will just emphasize that flag came in after the play. So it will be first down. It's just where will they end up? Which way does the, the, uh, the, the sticks get moved after that? Um, I've been very impressed with the, the Ravens' uh, offensive line tonight too. Um, I mean, a very experienced offensive line, um, but have played extremely well. And uh, the Stingrays' D-line, as we mentioned, uh, you know, big wraps on those guys. A young, young group, but very explosive. But the Ravens' uh, very experienced offensive line has done an outstanding job of keeping them well under control. I mean, that last play there, Stegman had to step up into the pocket to avoid the edge rush and, um, and still made an outstanding pass. Um, but for the most part, that line's done a great job protecting him. Something I'm excited to see is that number 85 jersey being returned by uh, being stayed in the Pallidon family, I should say. Sammy Pallidon now wearing his, uh, his brother's number. Did notice that. I don't think that's a coincidence, uh, but it's good, good to see the, uh, the family name being carried on. I think it was kept warm by, I'm trying to think of the wide receiver that scored a long touchdown in last year's Super Bowl who wore 85 and uh, took everything in my, uh, mm -hmm. in my instincts to, to not call him. <laughs> Pallidon, <and> Jaden <laughs> Pallidon, but even looked like him. But the uh, name, unfortunately, eludes me. You'd think being at the club last year, I'd probably remember that. But um, let's be let's be honest, my world's offensive line, so I look after the big guys inside, and uh, yeah, all the all the skinnies look the same. <laughs> you, have a, you have a real unfair bias to all the salad eaters, mate. <laughs> so this penalty is still being discussed, and just a bit of analysis here from our uh, third man of the call team. Saying the Ravens defense showing a fair bit of cover two pre-snap that's rotating to their traditional cover three post-snap. That might have been what got um, yeah, uh, Mr. Kari Kari on that intercept in the second mm. quarter. So it looks like we'll be against the Ravens there. I imagine it was something probably to do with the lines of unsportsmanlike or back chat. Because... Yeah, it looked, certainly looked back on the fact after the play, there's a decent chat about it. It was uh, whether it was maybe it was taunting or whether it was. So ultimately, out of all that, the Ravens just got a free down. It was second down, I believe, that throw yeah. was made on, and they've just gone back to the original line of scrimmage with the fresh set restart. Someone rang the bell. Holiday Miller is not the target. It is Warwick Russell once again. Oh. Can't that man move? He is taken down behind by number eighty who is another one we're looking to find the identity of, but Warwick Russell looking silky smooth here the, through this first half of football. He must have almost 300 yards total, well, I'll say offense, but special teams offense. He has been just untouchable. Well, you're the man between us who works with numbers. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> They're inside the red zone now. Stegman on first down is looking Ooh. for the red zone, looking for Russell. Despite oh. the coverage, oh. Russell Pretty comes serious. up with it. Let's not miss the replay on that one because that was ridiculous. Wow. That was amazing. And there Look he is. Double coverage like we talked about. Throws and he still up. has threaded that needle. What a play. That is unbelievable. Look at this. Throws up. Drops here. it in the bucket. That is just... You that takes years of chemistry for those guys working together. That is unbelievable. Take a look at it again because it is that nice. Stegman's going to be proud of this one. We've got people everywhere here in the booth watching that again because that is just unbelievable. Everyone's that is one of those plays that will be replayed for years. Everyone's excited about the catch. I'm just stoked I managed to get that on replay. <laughs> a wonderful night continues to be oh so more wonderful for the man kicking the football right about now. He's been perfect in the game and his kicking game stays just as perfect as it is a 42 point 40. drubbing here in the first half of football week one, Stingrays at Ravens. Yeah, again, that quite leaves you speechless, doesn't it? That is, uh, that's the sort of thing you expect to see on a Sunday on, on Fox Sport or something like that. 100%. Uh, that's incredible. The Ravens have a big filming team. They do a lot of socials there between Lucas Tuomoano and Sammy James. You just kind of wish they had a camera on that far side oh, to catch yeah. that in 60 FPS. I can already see Coach Holiday, Holiday, but Coach Holiday Miller, Coach Hollywood Road typing up a storm of analysis <laughs> for me. I can't wait for this one. 
Mitch Bessie back to kick us off here. It's been a big first half for the Bayside Ravens. There's no ums, ahs, or what ifs about it. This is a dominant performance here on their opening day of season 2021. Trying to yep. find a return fire. It's a great kick. Gab Salvo wisely lets this <laughs> ball dribble into the end zone. And they'll have, uh, they'll have a little bit of time here. And that's a very late block there. I think I think Brady Quinn might have got away with one there. Oh, no, that's not Brady Quinn. That's 99. My, my apologies, which is Shelvin Takabe Chan. I didn't see enough of it to make a judgment. All I saw is a, yeah, a man always. flying in the direction away from him. <laughs> around when the whistles blew. I missed it, and I think uh, the, the ones that matter with the yellow flags missed it too. So, hey, it's all's fair in football. Speaking about football, let's pop that score up so it is accurate. 42 nil. First down and 10 here. They're going to have to start... Well, you know, I'm going to say they're going to have to start digging deep in the playbook. It's week one. Maybe you just keep working on fundamentals here and, and keep hoping something happens as you... Look to improve your execution each drive. Three receivers out to the right now here for Kari Kari. Ooh. Underneath, going to Palladin, who I was just discussing earlier. He unfortunately can't bring that in. That'll bring up second down and 10. Just something on the backside of that play there. I don't know if we have it on the replay or not, but um, Catwell came off the edge there very, very fast. And you've got a fairly inexperienced running back out there trying to block him. He's such an impact player. It's got to wonder whether or not maybe you slide your protection towards him and, and have a, a, an offensive tackle trying to, to make that play, uh, make that block, sorry. And yeah, that's... There's no uh, sandbag in the back end of plays there when you've got people like Capewell coming across the... Backside of a play. This time they'll run towards Cape Well and oh. they'll break past him. Gap Salvo. Look at the Good switch run. of the arms as he moves that ball to his outside arm to allow for the fend. He has been the shining point of what's been a difficult first half here for the Gold Coast Stingrays. They're the sort of runs that, like in the, in the late in the second quarter here, you know, obviously. I mean, you've got Chris Clark there making the tackle, who's a, a, a phenomenal football player, but they're the sort of runs in the second second quarter you see the tackle was made, but in the fourth quarter, those tackles get missed. So we're going to keep calling his name throughout the season and Ooh. going to make things happen. I just want to... Mark Louie is joining the chat here. I feel like we've well, got Monday Night Manning happening. Man. I don't guess here. <laughs> and he's just asking us how we find the clarity of the whistles going on. So I'm like, just get this, mate. And I think this probably speaks to the, the clarity here, Mark, of the whistles. They're using electronic whistles because of COVID sanctions. So, obviously, it's a saliva whistles, it happens, but they're using electronic whip, uh, whistles. And I will tell you, Mark, as we stand here in the booths of Leo Williams Oval, we've had no issues hearing the whistles, mate. So, green light here from the, the booth of Andres and Bolton. I believe that, that was an issue last year, wasn't it? The first couple of weeks of the NFL season. Because mm. the electronic whistles weren't loud enough. Well, we're, we're having no troubles here in Gridiron, Queensland. First down and 10. Even split here. Two by two. Kari Kari looked long initially, but now has sure. to run. Look, keeping his eyes downfield. Looking for a man oh. short, and that'll be incomplete. Pass intended there, I think, once again for uh, Major. I like that play there from Kari Kari there in terms of, okay, he felt the pressure, got out of the pocket, made something happen, had a receiver present for him. Now, the ball was one hopped, but, you know, hey, it's the first week. Um, but that's the sort of excitement you can expect from the Rays' offense this year. And I'm thinking we might have just seen the last play of the half there. Somehow missed the two-minute warning amongst that. Might have happened during one of the touchdowns. So that brings the first half of Week 1 football to a close here. The Bayside Ravens currently defending home turf to the score of 42 to nil against the visiting Gold Coast Stingrays. Before we close to the half, got an interview here starting off with Ravens women's team rookie here, Kara as we patiently wait for our wonderful ground announcer to get his spiel out. There we go. Kara, obviously you probably would have joined the Bayside Ravens looking for a women's team, a new sport to try here, and unfortunately that won't be the case for you in season 2021. I've got to ask you, what's caused you to stay? Um, I mean, I guess I, I joined to 
come try out a new sport, mm-hmm. tried it, love it. Um, so I'm going to train up until there is a seat of it. <laughs> and there it is. Yeah. And that is going to be the case for not only you and your, your potential you know, rookie teammates here and also newer teammates here, but probably a lot of women around Gridiron Queensland. Uh, what caught your eye to this new sport? How did you find Gridiron here in Queensland? Uh, I had a friend that was playing it and uh, popped up on her Instagram trying to track some people and thought I'd check it out. There it is. So yeah. the power of social media. Your overall thoughts, what were your what was your initial thoughts? Talk me through your initial thoughts when you've found this sport, particularly once it started getting to possibly the idea of pads or at least the holistic idea of practice what was it what was running through your mind as you started it all piece together um i mean i think when i started it was like okay i vaguely know how this game works but i have no idea what i do in this and how mm-hmm. that operates so really getting my head around it um working out what position to play and then going from there trying to work out how that actually worked yeah. <laughs> it can be overwhelming and crazy admittedly but obviously despite that you're sticking around so i've got to say firsthand you can answer this question what would you say to all the potential female players that are looking for a new sport or possibly just looking for that little bit of push to join the sport in 2022? Um, I mean, come check it out. Um, definitely speaking for the Ravens, the most welcoming group I've ever really come across. So just fantastic. Come check it out. Um, I thought I'd just come to a couple of training sessions and I'm still here. So well, there you go. Yeah. Well, if you want to sauce it out, home games here at Karina Leafs Club for the next couple of weeks. So uh, come check it out firsthand. See for yourself. We're going to thank you for your time, Kyra, and we're going to pass off to one of your senior teammates here and Marissa Hayes. Firstly, hello to you, Marissa. It's been a long time. You were supposed to join me to watch the Panthers last week. That didn't work out for either of us. But, um, no, it didn't. But here you are, I'm repping the party, the, the purple party people here. Unfortunately, I can imagine for you, you'd be one of the most devastated at the, uh, the way things fell out for the women's division this year. But tell me, tell me where your head's at. Um, yeah, look, super disappointed for... Um, the women's league as a whole, um, mm-hmm. especially all the new rookies that um, we're looking to try out the sport at all the other clubs, not only here at Ravens. Um, and at this present point in time, looking at other options in the kind of, I guess, post-season, you would call it, um, because we don't have a league. Um, so looking at other ways at keeping fit, um, And then obviously socially still being involved in football um, and supporting our our men and our youth in regards to the um, Purple People Party, um, Mm -hmm. the PPP, Mm -hmm. uh, that we're trying to get off the ground this year. Um, But in general, our focus for now until um, next year when the league uh, starts in April, Mm -hmm. generally, um, we're looking to grow the not only the women's um, league, but um, all the juniors and youth that are out there uh, trying to get more interest um, to the sport, um, but especially for the women's. Um, so we're still training um, here at Karina Leagues Club on a Tuesday night, and we welcome anybody that wants to come down and check it out um, with us. We'd love to have them. Um, if it's not... Um, with the Ravens, we're looking at the Gold Coast, Deception Bay, Logan, Ipswich, North Brisbane. Um, if people are looking uh, to play Gridiron, um, as Kara just said, uh, she came down for two training sessions and uh, had we had a league, she would have been playing, loving it. Um, so yeah, if you want to come down, just have a watch. We're more than welcome to have you come down and just watch, ask a bunch of questions and then stick around for some training into next year. Um, so that's women's leagues all over the shop if you're interested jump on the ravens facebook page let us know and we can point you in the right direction if you're not local to our area because we'd love to grow the league um pretty devastated that six years of playing this is the first time there hasn't been a women's league um so myself and some of the other veterans um would really really love to get the league back off the ground for next year for 2022 passionate words but spoken by one of the uh the proudest female players in not this Thanks, sport Kenny. in this state, but in this country. So, yes, check it out. If you have the and even an ounce of curiosity about this sport, I promise you, you won't regret it. It's here at Leo Williams Oval for the next couple of Saturdays. Kara, Riz, appreciate your time. We're going to head to halftime. I desperately need a break. Thank you for joining us once again. Second half, not far away.
with a click of a button. We are back here for half number two, week one of Gridiron Queensland. The Bayside Ravens at home against the Gold Coast Stingrays where they've taken a commanding 42-0 lead through one half of football. Kenny Andres, Adam Bolton joining you and company here for this second half of broadcast on this joint broadcast between the Gold Coast Stingrays and the Bayside Ravens. Warwick Russell has been the story of the first half as Chris Clark oh. brings this football back and is zooming through oh. the centre corridor of this Stingray special teams unit. That will be wonderful field position again for Birdtown to start half number two. Absolutely has not been a great game for the brand. It has not been a good... Well, the return game has been good, but uh, for the kicking game, it has not been a good start at all. Uh, Chris Clark again, uh, explosive playmaker. And, uh, yeah, we've seen it there. Outstanding field position here for the Ravens to start with. Thank you so much for joining us here. Half and number two now underway. Much and large thanks to all the Ravens and the men's players who chipped in to have this dream. And on the other end there, Academy 49, the uh, young football development program founded by Lance Tonga Kilo to primarily make this dream happen with help as well from Bolton Financial Services and a live streaming at Brisbane. First down and 10 here for Birdtown. We've got a lot to cover about the Gold Coast Stingrays in half number two, including the identity of our mystery number 90. <laughs> As the chain gang is also adjusting to the <laughs> third quarter. Direction of travel and whatever else they're trying to work out. And there it is, north, south, east, west. Stegman's calling something out. Oh, they need one more. They're missing a down counter person or something. We are missing someone. Someone slacked on their duties. It is club responsibilities to uh, provide three volunteers for the chain each game. And you do give a shout out to the volunteers at each game that help out with that. It's always a, it's always a taxing job standing on the sideline. And here comes there our old mystery the, third uh, yeah. down marker. It's another one of those wonderful female players who are still staying around this club. You might have heard the interviews there with Kara and La Marissa, not Larissa, Marissa, at the back end of half there, speaking to the uh, the renewed, well, the, the plan to uh, continue the women's division into season 22. Taking a small hiatus now, but if this sport at all interests you, get amongst it. First down and 10, now the down mark is a set. A quick throw out to the right side of the field. Troy Posey oh. now finally getting involved. Had a missed long bomb in the first half. There he is getting involved early here in the second half. I think you'll find that uh, you'll probably see him getting involved a lot more in this uh, second half, whereas uh, you would think some of the adjustments made at halftime by the Stingrays would be around uh, Russell and the amount of the ball he's seen. Um, so that's going to give other opportunities here for Posey and the guys to, to get hold of the ball. Um, down markers just getting set up here again. Um, so we've got f first and 10. Very close to first and goal, to be honest. As we've got first and 10, as Adam Bolton said. And, oh, geez, they sold that well. Holiday oh. Miller's turning this ball into the end zone and with a flag in his flag. wake. I still thought Stegman had the football. Yeah, and I think the uh, the Rays D lineman did too. Um, so he sold the fake very well there. Great run there by Darius. Way to finish the run. But it looks like there's some extra business there. <laughs> and it's a hold on the Ravens. It looks like this is coming back. We'll see if we can listen in to get the number. I think it might have been 89, no, Braden No, Quinn. number 18. 18, Troy Posey, who just made the catch a player go. Charged with holding a defender. And that'll... Bring this a run back. As we uh, didn't get a whole lot of pre-show in the you know the 90 seconds I had running from my car to the booth today, I understand it is week one and there'll be a lot of new viewers from the families of some of these players who mightn't have watched before. As Stegman looks left but then throws back to Posey on the screen and a well done there, done by the outside defenders of the Gold Coast Stingrays. As we take a look at that again, the DB is tackling nicely in that particular instance. So I like the play design here. If you have a look, we had the halfback swing pass out to the left here, which Stegman had the first look at, and then he had also the uh, the bubble screen on the on the play side. Yes, just to finish off my thought, there are a lot of families, partners, friends who might be tuning in, supporting perhaps a new player or a player they haven't watched before there in this sport might be a little confusing to you. We will endeavour to somewhat educate you as the weeks go on here and 
make sure you're not too lost in this sport that can be pretty intimidating to learn. Stegman keeps oh. it on the QB keeper, but throws it out on this RPA option. And getting on the back end of that is the grizzled veteran, Regan Webb, who's looking extra Jesus-y here in 2021. <laughs> Almost didn't recognize him pre-game on the uh, sideline. So good to see him get back out there and back in action after he's missed a bit, fair bit of time with various injuries and work commitments. Um, I like this play design too. May have been an O-lineman downfield there, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> Keep it, is, it moving. It is an awkward throw there, throwing with your as a right-hander. Yeah, throwing short to your left across the body. Like that, with that sort of angle. So Very, very difficult and, and tough for the receiver too. Impressive maneuverability there from Jared Stegman. And Mr. Webb getting on the reception list. Third down though, the Stingrays have held on decently so far after giving up the initial play that got them down here in the first place. Holiday Miller denied a touchdown. A couple oh, plays wow. ago, and he is slammed down by that superstar number 90 who I can reveal. Names escape me. It is Louis Barisi <laughs> <laughs> who uh, I, I managed to spy his face at halftime, and I had to say that couldn't be a new player making plays no, like that. That is former Queensland not. inside linebacker Louis Barisi, who's looking even bigger than I last oh, saw yeah. him. Uh, obviously made the shift now to defensive end. Um, great, great read and awareness there. Um, obviously, Stegman saw something he didn't like and made the adjustment, but did not fool the raise one bit. And now they're going to go for a field goal here. Interesting, Warwick Russell, the usual PAT kicker, will not be kicking this. This kick, however, Whoa. is good. So the first field goal, by my knowledge, there's been several games today of the season is successful. So that's another three to the scoreboard there. So credit to the Gold Coast Stingrays, who thought they might have been in trouble here on this first drive, steal up and hold this Sting uh, this Ravens offense to three points on that drive. Yeah, absolutely. And after such a great field position from that return from uh, Chris Clark, certainly put the uh, Ravens in the box seat on that drive. So it showed some great steal there by the, the Stingrays to hold them out there and hold them to three. Number eight as well is also a, a former Raven uh, and former... Be Logan City Bear, although I think it might have been the Browns oh, playing yeah. back, back, back there, I think. Yes. In Nada Togafu, who was playing for the Ravens in Is one it? of their Sun Bowl games. I think that was the uh, the first year they were in purple, if memory serves correctly. Yeah, I think you're correct there, yep. And um, he he was in that Ravens team that went against... Was he a Wildcat at one point? He was a Wildcat at one yeah. point. There we go, a bit of blue. Might digging digging there. deep there. I think he was also, he might have spent time with the Rhinos as well, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, Let's just call, right we'll call him a journeyman, but his journey has taken him here after a couple of years away to the Gold Coast Stingrays. He's wearing jersey number 80 and playing on the defensive side of the ball. Here yeah. comes Gab Salvo, who was the oh. punctuation mark to many of the successful plays by Gold Coast and half number one, both on offense and special teams. Let's take an opportunity now to delve into the uh, the situation of the Brains Trust for the Gold Coast Stingrays. And leading the charge is the man who used to wear jersey number 14, 49. Lance... 49. 14, 49. Eh, <laughs> potato, tomato. <laughs> Lance Tonga Kilo, who is, I thought for sure, would be double dutying tonight, much like his uh, counterpart Jason Leon, and playing both on the field and serving as a head coach, but he has got the polar one and he is a pure head coach this evening. No, correct. He's uh, taken the clipboard on this year and uh, purely on the sideline, but um, an outstanding uh, football brain to have as a coach this, this year. This ball will be handed off to yeah. Salvo and he'll meet a host of defenders there, taking him down behind the line of scrimmage there and a few more players kicking off after the whistle and flags uh, will be thrown and I think that will be <laughs> on the 99 oh geez things not going great and uh, Ryan Newton probably on that second one trying to get an academy award <laughs> that was yeah. a decent dive <laughs> look you already got the flag I believe yeah, so get back to the huddle and uh, get on with business a little bit of GST chucked on that one there so <laughs> I think certainly laid that on thick but yeah you're right you got the flag just get back to the huddle hey move it on Bit of free yardage coming the Gold Coast way. But yes, Lance, um, I'll be honest. Let's see if he makes all season just on the clipboard. It's very, very hard when you're still in a position where your body's feeling it. Yep. You know, back end of the season, I think even a, 
the last time he had a run at this purely at head coach, oh. it, it was the back end. Yeah, he think, uh, found himself in a jersey and playing. Now, if I were to be a betting man, and of course I wouldn't be, but uh, if I was a betting man, I would load up the truck on that he will. Uh, we'll see the 49 back out there this year. That flag was on the 99 in the Shelvin to Calve Chand. And that'll be a free 15 yards for the Stingrays. More about the Gold Coast coaching staff to come because it's a wonderful group of, of young men and women over there. First down and 10, Stingrays. Quick throw here from Kari Kari. Oh. And that pass is almost intercepted by Clark. Couldn't quite find the grip. And I think there was a really big block on that play as well. Yeah, that was a great great read there by, by Clark. Let's just have a look here on the line. Yeah, some good work there in the interior line there for... Uh, by, uh, I shouldn't even know names going, but Big, Big C and uh, and Charlie um, at the guards there, and obviously Ryan Newton at centre. Second down and ten, a second chance here for John Karikari, brother Ben watching over from the states, I believe. A handoff oh. here to Gab Salvo, and this east-west running is proving to be a coin flip at best at times. He's managed to break off a couple of big plays in some of these outward bending runs, but a fair bit of tonight has seen him tackled in the backfield there, Mr. Gab Salvo. Yeah, I mean, part of that, you've got to put that down at the offensive line too. Like, you've got to maintain your blocks more on that. And if you are going east-west, if it's an outside run, well, then you've got to fight to get that outside bicep. And you've got to maintain that block. You can't just give people a shove and then watch them run past you because it's a long developing play. So plenty of film to review to do this week. Uh, and I don't think they would uh, mind me saying that. And third and long coming here for the Gold Coast Stingrays. Off the edge standing up is Jack Capewell. Two safeties somewhat deep here for the Ravens. They'll roll out to the left. Kari Kari looking Ooh. for Tesla Gabir. It will fall incomplete on third and long. And that'll be a punting situation here for Hobby and that special teams unit. So again, we talked before with that uh, rollout to the to the left that Stegman made in the pass to, to Regan Webb. Similar there, so we've got uh, Kariko rolling out to his left and he now is trying to make a deeper pass downfield. That's very, very difficult to do, rolling across body and then throwing downfield like that. Um, hey, it was almost there. It was a good effort. And just wanted to uh, give a shout out. I didn't get to mention, I didn't find his name in time. The man who kicked the field goal uh, and that first Ravens drive was the Englishman, Robert Quimby, putting his soccer skills to use and adding a three-pointer to start the first offensive drive for the Bayside Ravens. He might be called upon again if the Gold Coast Stingrays can keep them out of the end zone. Stokes looking for a block, almost finding himself offside. Hobby gets a nice awkward punt there that'll split yeah, the returners just... there, and that'll end up nicely settling around the Ravens 12. And that's more of what you want to see in terms of your, your punt game. Had some better time to get that ball off. Nice kick. Gets a very favourable bounce. Obviously, in that scenario is the Ravens. You want to stay away from that if that hits a Ravens player and, and it becomes live. So you don't want to risk then turning the ball over and giving the Stingrays amazing field position. Get away from it. Their offense has shown tonight plenty of ability to move the ball. So, hey, take your medicines, take the field position and, and get move it on. That they do. Here's a chance for the, the Stingrays defense to sort of capitalize on a bit of field position here. This will be the longest field the Ravens have had to deal with so far tonight. And coming in at quarterback, taking his first snaps as a senior quarterback for the Ravens, Liam Reeves. Both quarterbacks oh. wearing 20 numbers tonight. He'll hand off to Holiday Miller. Holiday Miller will find some space and earn his team a first down. And to the sideline comes Liam Reeves. Now, I'm not sure if I'm mistaken there or not, but was that a little shovel pass that he made? It's just having a look here. No, just no, a direct handoff. Just a direct handoff, yeah. Great run there by Holiday Miller. Finds a seam. Plenty of room to work in and uh, good first down. No radio headsets here. Liam Reeves comes to the sideline to his starting quarterback and now offense coordinator, Jared Stegman. He'll give him the play. Just giving you guys uh, all the heads up. The time on the screen is merely just a guide as this handoff is again to Holiday oh. Miller. How did he shake out of that? Adds a oh. stiff arm and is eventually taken down by Nada Togafu. Great pursuit there by Nada. Um, 
Shows his experience there. Wasn't wasn't fooled with the uh, the stop and start and the, the shimmy by by Darius. Good angles, good lines, and uh, good sideline tackle. Um, after a great run by Darius. Speaking about Night of Togufu there, I love how I love the personalities you find in Gridiron Queensland and like halftime quirks, you know, pregame quirks. <laughs> As we were just having a quick chat at halftime, we found Nata Togavu at the back of the shed just having a quick nap. Yeah. Just a quick, quick, quick minute to himself. <laughs> Reeves for his first pass attempt of the day, and it would have oh. been completed to Lockie Amore, except for the copious amount of electronic whistles that call that play dead. Uh, we're not sure if that must have been a false start somewhere. It's usually one, why they blow that dead. One would assume. Yep, and there we go. False start. On the offense, uh, couldn't make out the number. Of legal formation, I think a you legal said. Legal formation. Oh, I thought I'm I saw not the sure year. that's the symbol for it, but hey, first game of the year. It is what it is. In any case, let's delve deeper into this coaching staff for the Gold Coast Stingrays because another one of them is a young man who I'm uh, you know, a big fan of there. And um, moving up to offensive coordinator there, uh, Connor Brewer. In, uh, Connor Brewer, who's climbed the ranks through the junior division, through the Colts division. Took over the junior division himself, I believe, last year. That's correct. And successfully got into the uh, Sun Bowl Championship coaching list. And now he's given his opportunity to coach at the men's level. So it's been a wonderful journey up the coaching ladder for young Connor Brewster. A Brewer. Brewster. It is Brewster, right? Apologies, Connor. Um, yeah, I think you're right there. Sorry, I think I got it wrong. Um, but yeah, I've I've had the the, the pleasure of uh, coaching alongside with Connor for a couple of years now. Um, very very bright young football mind, um, and we're going to hear his name a lot, and he's going to continue to rise through the ranks in uh, through Gridiron Australia for the years to come. Um, yeah, very very sharp offensive mind, and it's good to see him get the opportunity as the OC this year. Coached all the way around there. We're trying to fix the clock there. Our clock is not accurate. I'll give you that. But we're trying to give you some sort of guidance of where we are in the quarter. I'll do that just vocally as well as our director, Sam. And also camera operator, Sam, gets back to film in the game. Reeves for his oh, now official wow. first pass attempt. Wants to go long oh, and is saved for throwing his first intercept as a Raven by Warwick Russell. His old teammate, Jamal Sinapati, almost picking that pass off deep. Yeah, great coverage there by Jamal. Kept good body, body position. Uh, got a little bit turned around, got a bit lost, but uh, yeah, threw his hand out at the end there to, to knock it away. Uh, so great coverage from what would have been probably another Ravens touchdown, but great ball there by Reeves. And he came to silent for a bit of guidance from his, I would have to assume, quarterback coach and Jaron Stegman, who was giving him a few pointers after that 50-50 ball. We'll call it that second down and 10 here, Birdtown. Ball at their own 40. Oh. It'll be another handoff to ha oh, wow. Holiday Miller, who dances his way through the middle hashes before being touched. Gets about, I would argue, nine yards before a defender got a hand onto him, and that looks to be, well and truly, a Ravens first down. Well, you got to love Darius's um, ball carrier vision and his patience as well to allow his blocks to occur, to read the play. Uh, but obviously, when you're getting nine yards downfield before you're getting touched, um, that's a massive shout out to your O-line too. They're doing a great job up front there, as I've talked about before. Very, very experienced squad. A lot of uh, Sun Devil members there, uh, and including Matt Ole, who's uh, played over in Germany in uh, GFL 2. Um, so, yeah, look, having a great night down there. As we go to first down and 10, following that Holiday Miller run. Ball is at the Stingrays 35. Ooh. Holiday Miller called upon again and producing similar results. It looks like he was just short of the first down there. About a nine-yard run there for Holiday Miller. Another good run. A little bobble there at the start of the play, which could be dangerous. Uh, but again, uh, offensive line did a good job of keeping him clean um, and got a great run there. You have a look there. Oops. Yep, bobble. Breaks a tackle. Another nine-yard gain. Great start of the season for Darius Holiday Miller. Just going to adjust this so we have a, a, fair, a little more room for error when replaying. And we'll get to that in a second. Second down and short. An opportunity to take the, the throw to the end zone here if he wants it, but oh. it'll be a quick pop pass to Lockie Amore, and Amore will get the first down. It'll be run out of bounds by Jamal Sinapati. Nice play design, that one. I think we've seen that one a, a bit in college and uh, even in the NFL this year, but nice little pop pass there to Amore. 
um, who then, yeah, got around the corner and then great coverage and uh, solid sideline tackle um, or bump out there by, by Jamal. I'm going to give us an extra two seconds of replay time there, Bolts. Excellent. And a couple of uh, big former personalities of Gridiron Queensland tuning in there. Quarterback Tommy Corwin and uh, Frankie Passamani Whoa. getting in on the action via the stream here in a week one. 45 nil. the score is here on the earlier part of the third quarter. Reeves, QB2, oh. looking for the snap, almost oh. getting players offside. Holiday Miller, oh. look at him though. Oh. Dancing his way through defenders, almost mesmerizing the back four. He gets them and inside attacking territory. Finishing the run with some authority too. Didn't have a lot of room, so hey, okay, if we can't go around him, we're going through them. Uh, but yeah, good run. May have been a little jump there that I thought uh, was a false start. Anyway, um, probably a line ball call, but great finish of that run by Holiday Miller. Australian and Queensland women's player Brittany Todd tuning in from if memory serves the Northern Territory yeah I think, I think that's where so. she's working nowadays there we go just confirmed shout out to you Britt and I think that's the end of the quarter that is what a very quick quarter that was here I was saying suggesting it was the <laughs> the third quarter look uh, I will change this to quarter four no promises on how the time's going to go down now, I do believe, now it could be incorrect because it's been a while, but I think now fourth quarter and the uh, the lead is greater than 35. I believe the mercy rule's in uh, in play now, which means running clock other than if there is a timeout or for the two-minute warning. So I reckon we're going to find that this quarter is going to run very, very quickly. Um, so let's see what the uh, see, see if we have any opportunities the Stingrays get here to, to put some points on the board. And likewise, how the uh, Ravens finish this one out. Get you to keep vamping there, uh, Bolts, as I try to avoid sending a nuke to Cuba. <laughs> Fantastic start to the year with technology here. So, Ravens now, I'm just waiting for the down markers to reset. I think it's first and goal now on about the six. So, we'll start seeing um, some rotations here, I reckon, from the from the Ravens in terms of some of their uh, younger players who will start getting some play time. Uh, and probably similar for the Stingrays too, although they've uh, got a very young team that we've already discussed. Um, I think you'll find that you'll see some of those guys starting to get some rotation time as well. So we're going to have the clock counting up here in the fourth quarter. And as my core partner suggested, we were moving to running clock here given the deficit is greater than 35 points. QB2, Liam Reeves oh. wants to get in on some shares on the Warwick Russell market. <laughs> Can't quite acquire that, but he does possibly get a pass interference here. Flags were down. I think it's encouraging for the Ravens to see what we've seen just so far, just in the small taste we've seen of Liam Reeves, uh, throwing some really good balls out there. Here's another long-time Raven coming back to the... Well, coming back to Birdtown, I should say, after a year for the Logan City Bears where he started a quarterback for much of that season. Said he learned a lot and decided to come back home and get some tutelage under Jared Stegman. And obviously, you can't really blame him, can you, when you've got the, you know, one of the Australian quarterbacks, past Australian starting quarterbacks who's played over in Japan and, and I think Germany as well? Yes, yeah, uh, Germany Japan, Germany, Sweden, Sweden the Uppsala well? 86s, yeah. if memory serves correctly. And first down and goal. Braden Quinn this time coming across. And this play also Ooh. called... Was I right in saying that play was called dead? Yes, it was. Because I heard a lot of... Sh I thought the uh, I thought the Ravens were... The Ravens sideline might have been misguidedly cheering. It was actually the Stingrays <laughs> sideline <laughs> that was cheering the play being called dead there on the offensive penalty. And... Or is Correct. it... A, sorry, is it a... Was that, so I see a timeout signal to the Stingrays there. Um... But maybe it, yeah, no, it looks like maybe it was a timeout to the Stingrays. So no penalty on the play, just a timeout called before the play started by the Gold Coast Stingrays. That's their first of half number two. A nice little pop at the end of the play there. I think it's what the uh, Stingrays sideline might have been getting a bit excited about. Although, again, dead play. Now, as I mentioned in the first half here, first home game here for the Bayside Ravens here in their new home, the, the Corona Lees Club, Leo Williams Oval, their new sacred ground. They're going to be at home games here for the next three weeks. If you're watching this and you're somewhat local, come check it out because 
Boltz, am I safe to say that it has been an absolute vibe here at Karina this evening? Absolutely. It has been a fantastic vibe. Um, great setup they've got here, great facilities, and um, yeah, credit to the to the Ravens for putting on a show. You know, music pumping, they've got grand announcers going, I'm sure they've got plenty of more stuff going. Plenty of social stuff happening as well. Keep an eye on the Bayside Ravens social page, and I'm sure the Stingrays Whoa. as well. What a flip Whoa. pass! A shovel to Darius Holiday Miller, a bit of sleight of hand by tonight's number 29, Liam Reeves, who technically, well, that's technically his first touchdown pass of 2021. Correct. Great play, again, great play design, that one. Um, good patience there from Liam. Sells that he's looking for the, the, the deep ball. Look at this. Look, look, look. Shovel. And Darius just walks in. And a nice circle button there <laughs> by Darius Holiday Miller. So, Holiday nice. Miller adds uh, his... Second or third? Um, I think it's his second. He had one called back. No, I think you're right there. So, in sort of a... Weirdly quiet night for Holiday Miller. The love's been shared amongst all the skill positions. As Quimby has taken over kicking duties and has not added a blemish to the kicking record so far. A field goal on a PAT to his name now. That was very, very close to uh, to being blocked. There's a great rush off the edge there. and uh, a Good diving effort to try and block the kick. Wasn't successful, but hey, it looks, it looks good. 52-0. The score for the... Bayside are Ravens. I get this very nervous feeling when I change the score and you look over my shoulder. You are the mathematician between us at Bolton as I try to use all my fingers and toes to add seven to a scoreline. <laughs> That's the point where I need the Excel spreadsheet, mate. It's starting to get a bit um, too many big numbers for me. 15-0. This, this quarter will be running by. We're probably closer to the end than most people feel, especially if you're trying to measure all the quarters equally. Running clock here this evening as the Ravens have come out to a very big lead here through the first half. And, well, they've been, they've been slowed down to the Stingrays credit here in half number two. I think this is going to be Gab Salvo again back to return. No, it is made, uh, Major, and that is a Great good tackles. open field tackle by, is that the 37? I thought it was 32 for a second. As 37 is Jordan Warburton getting a special teams tackle on the stat sheet. That's some great coverage there. That's what you want to see on your on your special teams players. That's where guys make their name and, and learn about the game um, and, and earn their playing time elsewhere. So hey, he'll get uh, big props from the sideline for that one. So what do we got here? We're first down for the Stingrays on about the... 15? No, 16 by the looks of it. That they do. First down and 10. From the Stingrays. 16. Kari Kari remains in the game. A few players rotated in now for this Ravens defense. Much of the same starters for the Stingrays as they meet a whole lot of resistance from Birdtown on that first down run. And that can, uh, this late in the game, that can, so you can see these things where you have the uh, younger players rotating in who are very fresh if they've been on the sideline most of the game and then you've got the experienced heads of the Rays that are out there but they've been uh, out there all day. Um, so they're getting very, very tired. So it's uh, almost like you're facing the, the second second wind and second rush. So, uh, yes. Second down and 11. I think jumping onto the field there now is the... 15 and Cameron Ewington. Far side wide receiver for the Gold Coast Stingrays. And throwing oh. deep now with an open man. Oh. It was that man, number 11, Matthew Major, Major, went up and competed but couldn't quite bring it down. Ben Stokes and company there on the coverage. Landed very heavily there, but I uh, like the play call there. Um, and the uh, can't uh, question the heart and the attempt there by uh, by Major. Um, look at that. It gets good release off the line. Just has to wait a little bit for it. And, uh, yeah, good coverage there by the by the Ravens safety. And that's dating back even to his junior days there. That is uh, Kari Kari's bread and butter there. The quick release off the line and that deep fade. Something he wants to keep in his... Uh, his quiver for season 2021. A third down now here for Kari Kari and the Stingrays. 
looking right to his two receivers. Napier was one of those. Dances himself out of trouble and finds oh. an open Napier. And Napier trucks his way forward for a first down. Excellent work. Scrambling there by Kari Kari and finding an open man. Great work by Kari Kari there to uh, use his feet to buy himself some time, get that roll out and then find uh, Napier in open in space who fairly certain he broke off his route there as well to, to get open for him. So great work there. Um, by, by Napier and by Curry Curry. First down now for the Stingrays. Can they find a way to get on the board here in the dying minutes of the fourth quarter? First down and 10, ball on their own 35. They'll hand this off. And Napier couldn't find a block. And I think that was Salvo again, perhaps, getting taken down behind the line of scrimmage. I think that's something to take, to, uh, try that again. It looks like that's something that will take away from the game for the Stingrays uh, when they look at film review is uh, certainly the release of the, the O-line off the ball in the run game. They've really struggled today to find any consistency there, um, which makes it very, very difficult then to, to move the ball because you become very, very one-dimensional, particularly in second and third down. And I'm trying to make out the Stingray down there. I think it was, sorry, it was ball carry, and it wasn't, Salvo, it was number 35. It was Adam Hennessy, who's now being walked from the field there. And that tackle at the end of that seemed to have shaken him up a little bit. He's getting tended to now, and play will resume very shortly. It looks like it might have been a shoulder issue on the back end of that. Ten points so far from the sting uh, the the Ravens here in the second half. So for those keeping count, a significant improvement on defense for the Stingrays in half number two, albeit Ravens opting to rotate through a, a few more players on their offensive skill set. And also their line it appears. Joel Maddock here on the defensive line. I think that's Lucas Tuomoana as well making his way for some reps here in quarter number four. Napier looks short here on the side, but they'll actually go to the tight end on their stick route, at number 86. That's Riku. Riku Hataya. And what was a handy release valve? The finish, if I remember finish, correctly. Yes, yes the finish a wide receiver. He's uh, He works, and let me go delve deep into my memory banks here, is in the Medical community is a, a yeah, nurse or a doctor uh, of some sort? Yeah, uh, emergency department nurse. Yeah. So, so it works long hours and, uh, yeah. Uh, but every year, the same thing, family commitments, work commitments, et cetera, et cetera. I'm retiring, I'm done. And then uh, Finds this time of back. year rolls around <laughs> and uh, you can guarantee to see him back at practice when he can get there. So, second down and a long. That was a nice completion, though. I think, was there a penalty on that play that we missed? Yeah, I think yes. so. To apologise for that. As soon as it was on the Stingrays. Which is unfortunate. They might have been finding a little bit of action there following the, the Napier catch, which kind of got them some momentum. 52 points to nil is the scoreline here in the fourth quarter in favour of the home side, the Bayside Ravens. Four down linemen for the Ravens showing blitz. Kari Kari. Has Salvo in the backfield with him. He'll protect, and he was looking for Riku Ataya again. Second time in a row. Couldn't find him. Pass sailing above his head. Yeah, had to get, the ball, get rid of the ball very, very quickly there. Um, that is under significant pressure um, from the Ravens' defensive pass rush. Um, so had to force that ball a little bit sooner than he probably would have liked. Just saw it float sort of between receivers there. I think referee Harley Johnston tuning in from North Queensland. Earlier, we had Mark Louie tuning in. So, the officials, also big fans of football. I think a lot of people forget that sometimes. Third down and very, very long here for the Gold Coast Stingrays. There's tight end to the right. Verticals, no. It'll be a flood concept. Kari Kari wants the deeper man, which is Napier. It'll get him a fair chunk of yardage here. And at this point, you'd think they're probably going to try to Line up and go for it in fourth down. A nice completion there from Kari Kari to Napier. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think you go for it here. And, you know, you're, well, obviously nothing to lose, but also at this point in the game, hey, it's good live practice in terms of your, you know, your fourth down packages and stuff like that. Well, scrub um, out logic. It looks like the punt team's coming on. All right, yep, scrap that. <laughs> what do we know? <laughs> uh, sometimes, audience, you are just as much in the driver's seat as much as we are. Time out here for Birdtown as they will probably take it to get a big platoon swap. They were looking to send their defense out, saw a punt team muting out, and needed time to respond in kind. And I'll tell you what, if the Stingrays did that on purpose, that's, that's pretty genius. <laughs> and could well have done so. Um, knowing how Connor operates, that could have been uh, something he's designed, um, a la Belichick type thing. Yeah, Connor Brewster is joined... Join me on Gridiron Queensland calls time to time, particularly for some of the uh, the other Colts games he hasn't been participating in when he has not been serving his club valiantly. He's been a big stalwart to the Gold Coast Stingrays football program for a number of years now. Player, coach, and volunteer. As the music continues... Oh. Scrub that as the music comes to a close here as the Stingrays line up here on fourth down, sending their special teams unit out. It is, after all that, James Hobby, the punter, sent out to do his thing. The left boot of Hobby finds a bit of space and the ball goes sailing out of bounds around the Ravens 31. We'll see where they spot this. But another chance here for the... Uh, the twos of this Bayside Ravens offense to get some points on the board. A couple of rotations coming through. Regan Webb on the field. Sammy James on there. O-line largely staying the same here for the uh, the Ravens though. Still see Jerry Fargata, Matthew Ole, the center, staying as is. Before they kick off though, just another acknowledgement there to the Ravens men's players who chipped in to make the stream happen tonight, along with Lance Tong Kilo's Academy 49. Check that out on socials to see what that's all about. Bolton Financial Services and of course your broadcast work to you tonight by live Ooh. streaming. Brisbane ball deep for Jamal in oh. a party. Lost the ball in the lights. That's almost twice now Jamal has picked off, well almost picked off Liam Reeves. And it's good to see Reeves not afraid to take shots. Um, you know, some may say that, like, this late in the game, do you need to be taking those deep shots? Well, hey, they're just running their playbook. We know how explosive their offense is. You're not a fan of that. Maybe their defense needs to stop it. Liam Reeves, as I said, Junior Raven growing up, was part of the last Junior Raven Sun Bowl 2013, defensive captain. Uh, played through a lot of pain in that game. Was Probably shouldn't have been out there. <laughs> His defensive quarter coordinator was a madman. Also really good looking though. Second down and 10. As a handoff to Holiday. Oh. Is that Holiday Miller? That, that is it Holiday is. Miller. How much space are they going to give him? Oh. He wasn't touched until he was down to the Stingrays. 26. He is finding wide open planes tonight. When the Rays had the line crowded there... Um, O-line do a great job of, of opening up space and then Darius just uh, uses his speed and explosiveness to, uh, to to find the gaps and the seams in a very tight defense. Yes, as I said, a lot of people rotating in for the Ravens. Still a lot of the defensive starters out there for the Stingrays and I think the fatigue is starting to show just a little bit. Another player rotating in, that's the 34 for the Ravens. Not on my team list as this pass Ooh. almost athletically intercepted by the, uh, I think that was, what, 23 I spotted, uh, but not on my spotting sheet. Might have been Eduardo Serrato on the 25, or it was the 28. It looks like there was a miscommunication there between Lucas the quarterback Alfred. and the receiver as... There was an outward throw, a ball was thrown out to the sideline and the receiver broke in. So I think uh, either there was a misread on the defense or a miscommunication at the line. Yeah, Liam Reeves played a couple games as quarterback as a junior as well. Primarily has played his career on the defensive side of the ball. Holiday Miller in motion to the left. They're going to try and drop a swing pass out to him. That they do. He's going to find about seven yards out of that play and this will be third and short here 
for the Ravens as they approach the goal line, possibly for the last time this evening. Now, again, the depth he's getting on those swing passes, although that one he caught caught forward. I'll continue to say, I think there is, there's some tricks up the sleeve there for later in the season. So you can keep receipts on that one. I reckon I might be on the money there. For those tuning in, trying to find the previous scores of today's game, unfortunately, don't have that for you, I'm afraid. I'm sure that will be updated on both Gridiron Queensland Socials and their website sooner rather than later. Third down, about four yards as needed to keep this drive going. Otherwise, they'll probably line up for another three. Reeves directing traffic under pressure, though, and he will take a sack. sack. That is the second sack tonight for this Stingrays defense. Stegman bumbling a snap earlier. This time, getting in on the sack was the number eight. It was another one of our mystery men. I apologize. Not on our roster. But a good job there getting pressure on Reeves. And they're going to send out the field goal unit here, the, the Bayside Ravens, to add another three points to the scoreline, which currently sits at 52 points to nil. Basic to hold, a Quimby to kick. A PAT and a field goal already in this second half. This is up, and this is a short. Needed an extra two yards on that to convert, and that will send this offense for the Gold Coast back onto the field with yet another chance to try and get this goose egg off the board. Kumbi's range, though, discovered this evening, it appears. I think it's uh, something we haven't probably mentioned tonight, Kenny, is how, st I guess, strange it is to see the uh, Stingrays offense being led without number six out there, Damien Malloy. I can't believe we haven't mentioned that yet. And Damien Malloy to not be anywhere on that sideline in an official capacity is also quite odd. Yeah. Truly playing the family role now. And quite frankly, I'm happy for him. Damien Malloy has put his body plenty on the line for this sport and this team. So uh, it's kind of nice to know that he's actually probably resting and enjoying a bit of family time and letting that body finally recover. <laughs> First down and 10. Although, I'm not going to lie, do miss seeing number six play. Capewell still on the field. He's going to try and speed up the clock here for Kari Kari. It's a bad yeah. snap, though, that and is. eerily similar to the end of Sunball 2020. Jack Capewell jumps on this football. I think I'm trying to see if they downed, if they considered that ball down by Kari Kari as he was trying to get on it or whether Capewell recovered it. Definitely didn't return it for a touchdown. He was down as he gained possession, if that's the case, but... It looks like the offense is coming back on the field. So that was a shortly lived short lived drive, I should say, for Kari Kari's offense. Yeah, I think uh talk of Damien Malloy, you know, we hear we heard a few times that he was done, retired, we're finished, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, family commitments, work commitments, stuff like that. But yeah, this year um, has, has wrote, well, last year, right off into the sunset. And uh, yeah, as you said, good for him. There was something different about yeah, the way yeah, he announced his retirement last year. And that was an incredible performance in that, that Sun Bowl. Wasn't like, it just? Put and his body on the line, which is not unusual for him, but this was another level. First down and 10 inside the Stingrays red zone. Reeves returns, but Quinn puts Quinn in motion. And they'll run speed option to the one receiver side. And not a whole lot of space there. A good uh, pursuit from the Stingrays. Yeah, great pursuit and great discipline there by the Stingrays. You know, maintain their assignments and uh, use the sideline for their to their advantage. Another narrative we haven't mentioned uh, from our Gold Coast Stingrays note so far. The addition of a couple of old Thunder folk. The Thunder, of course, <laughs> like the women's division, just taking a hiatus for now. But Kel and Amanda, Housens, the now Housens, I can now say. Now Housens, yes. Are, uh, they've dipped their feet in uh, in Stingray land and uh, they're uh, lending their football knowledge to the Stingrays in 2021. Holiday Miller, as we'll get the back, that, back to that in a second. And Holiday Miller totes this forward for a good carry. Yeah, good run there by Darius Holiday Miller. But yeah, back to what you mentioned about the Housens being over at uh, the Stingrays this year. Kenny. Um, so Amanda's one of those ones who's a very, very talented football player within the women's division and she's down at the Sting Race this year. She's still training and practicing and, and whatever else again with the uh, the hope that we can rebuild those numbers and get the women's competition back up and running again in 2022. And here's a blast from the prize. Greg Stacy tuning in to the, uh, the broadcast there. Greg Stacy, a player from the old green and red 
Ravens days. Greg is, as he was known as. Good to see some of the the red and green era of the Ravens still touching base. Third down. Inches to go. Reeves calls for it and will send his running back forward. Holiday Miller diving for the line. I haven't in. seen a signal. Yeah. Touchdown signaled for Darius Holiday Miller. That's number three for him. And you got to think they might consider bringing in a backup for him at some point. Job well and truly done for him. I see a couple of the starters. Their kit's off here for Birdtown. Ben Stokes has got his jersey off. A few other guys there well and truly retired for the evening. I think, uh, yeah, Holiday Miller looks like he's hobbling a little bit, so you would probably think that might be the last we see of him tonight, but that was a great effort by him to stretch out and get into the corner of the end zone there. Uh, it's been an outstanding game by him, and yeah, three touchdowns now. Kick is up. Oh, oh, nope, and we're off. And the streak has well and truly ended here for the kicking game for the Bayside Ravens. Score remains at 58 points to nil. The game shortly coming to a close. Don't have an official clock I can refer to, I'm afraid, but just get a pretty gut feeling that yeah, uh, with the, the running, running clock, clock I think it's sort of done. Away. I think the, the, the body language and the energy on both sidelines, I think, indicates that it's probably done. And just another shout out to Feast on Fruit from Morningside, providing the platters for today's raffle here at Leo Williams. And just another shout out to the men's players who chipped in financially alongside Academy 49 to make tonight's stream happen, along with the help of Bolton Financial Services and live streaming Brisbane. I think that is an opportunity to give you a shout out too, Kenny. It's been a uh, been a big day for you, uh, doing the rugby league uh, commentary and yeah. then getting here tonight and so going to do this game as well. As well, starting my day celebrating the, uh, my nephew's third birthday, which quite frankly was probably the the most epic of all the things today. <laughs> as exciting <laughs> as it is to be here a week one, but I tell you what, it's lovely to be back. It's lovely to be back. Bringing it back, number nine, Gab oh, Salvo breaks a tackle. Here we go. Oh, oh, and I thought he would find a block that would send him forward. Does a magnificent job of getting this ball back to the Stingrays 35. There we go. There's a little bit of a uh, little bit of whole life film stuff for them to go back to and you know build some confidence going into next week and um, you know I guess you know take take what victories you can from this and then build from it. As I said, very very young Stingrays team, so they'll learn a lot from this. And you know as the season goes on, you will see them improve significantly. And stay tuned for the end of the game where we'll be announcing the selected live stream player of the game who I'm led to leave as a wonderful six pack of apple juice waiting for them. <laughs> the completion of week number one. A timeout here to the Gold Coast Stingrays. And that should be their third and final if memory serves correctly. I think they used two earlier in the half. Yeah, I think that is their last. Must be trying to uh, take the last. Probably, you wouldn't think there's a lot of possessions left in this game, so take the opportunity they've got to try and get some points on the board. Or maybe they're just trying to run some, some new concepts and get some film. Oh, to, and to also, from. also to, for newer players looking to get their feet wet. Yeah, this absolutely. This is the time to do it. Matthew Major has been one of those players who's uh, definitely sprung some hope out of this performance yeah absolutely he's certainly made an impact and uh he's, he's gonna get plenty of attention in weeks to come now when uh teams prepare to, to play the race that they do kari kari now with a couple of tight ends now in to help napier is one of those i think will be one of those guys playing a few offensive positions this season and that is a short run there to the number eight who i believe is a person missing off our team list and we'll just double check all the team lists sent to me <laughs> I think what we see there is uh, again blocks not being maintained in order to be a fairly straightforward inside run play um, the, I mean, the guys have been going hard all day there's not a lot of rotations happening there so they've, they've are very very tired boys on that Stingray's offensive line uh, this makes sense sorry it was it was on it was on one of the team lists there it was a late change from jersey number seven to number eight is Christian Denton another one of these young Stingray players apologise to you, Mr. Denton, for 
contribution so far being unnamed. And here he goes again. Denton, a hard slog though. Can't get back to the line of scrimmage. But, oh, Ryan Newton, what has he done? He's, he's clearly captured the disfavor for a few Ravens tonight. But he's one of the nicest guys around. He's one of the nicest guys, but he goes right to the whistle and maybe the very end of the whistle. Um, so he does get under people's skin quite a lot. Um, yeah, there's, I could tell a few stories of a few games where he's got under people's skin and these sorts of things have happened. So I'm not really surprised he's in the middle of this. Well, he's he's, he's probably earned as many penalties as he's possibly been up so far. So <laughs> quite frankly, he's, he, he's a net positive. Waiting for the call here. The U USC yeah. against Joel Maddock on sportsmanlike conduct. So Newton's done it again. Yep, he said he he, he goes right to the edge of that whistle and, it, and does it every single play. Which hey, listen, frustrates people because also he is a bit shorter and whatever else. So some of the bigger guys do get and do get frustrated and hey, you get he some gets sore ribs. <laughs> yeah. Hey. It's a skill set. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a skill set. First down and 10. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another take here. Kari Kari will keep. He's under oh. pressure. Is that Des Bro oh. chasing him down? Checking the team list, it is in fact Jordan Warburton. That That's second player of the night for that young man and a nice open field tackle early on special that was teams. Impressive pursuit there. Very impressive. Um, we talked about Ryan Newton there with how he, he plays hard to the whistle and, and goes those penalties. There's a, a guy who wears, uh, I think he's number 51 for the Ravens, their centre, Matt Ole. Exactly the same. Again, very, very intense football player. Plays to the whistle. But yeah, does get uh, does get those penalties. Speaking about playing to the whistle, the final whistle has sounded here in this week on matchup of the Gold Coast Stingrays visiting the Bayside Ravens, where the home side has successfully defended home turf with a 58 to nil a resounding victory to open their title defence here in 2021. And with that win, they will cue Country Roads for the first time this season. The now adopted victory song for the Bayside Ravens. You can see on the screen there, the Bayside Ravens, the victorious side, near side to your sideline for the Gold Coast Stingrays. Obviously a lot to learn week one. Things can look very different from week one to the oh. final week of the season there. And I don't think we've yet ever seen in the certainly not in the live stream era but almost since the 1990s a final series that hasn't featured the gold coast stingrays it'll be hard to see them missing the uh the playoffs in season 2021 now a lot of talent over there a lot of coaching depth um you know but they'll learn a lot from this game they'll also get a lot of good film and a lot of things to work on and and it's, it's a long season they'll continue to improve as this goes along and our it's our pleasure now to announce the live stream player of the game and I think we are in agreement here. It's going to wide receiver number 81, Warwick Bones Russell, for an outstanding first half before calling it a day. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Phenomenal first half. You look at those numbers and you'd expect to see those. You see those numbers in a, a blowout game, like in terms of a, a day out. But for a first half, it's incredible. Three receiving touchdowns as well as a 60-yard punt return touchdown, as well as a perfect record with the boot. An outstanding performance from the man they call Bones. But with that, that wraps us up here in week one of Gridiron live streaming action. Now, listen, we can't promise you <laughs> when our next <laughs> game is. It could be as soon as next week. It could be a little further down, and we can't exactly tell you who and what will be in charge of getting this broadcast out. But... Positive signs are out there, and we certainly hope we will be getting your company over the next season of Gridiron Queensland football, whether it's with me, Kenny Andres, Adam Bolton, Travis Patrick, or my host of wonderful commentators to come. We certainly hope you join us as we bring you this sport here in Queensland, Australia. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the coverage tonight. And for the uh, first time in 2021, we'll see you next week.